We've traveled through the 1992 World League season, but there's one final stop in Montreal tonight for World Bowl II. And appropriately, the two teams are the best in the World League. The Orlando Thunder and the Sacramento Surge have the records to match and the most productive quarterbacks. The high-scoring Thunder is led by Scott Mitchell. And the surge is charged by World League MVP David Archer. It's time for the World League's Big Show. What's up, Steve, Mom, Dad, everybody, we're going to the dance. Montreal, Quebec, Canada. A gorgeous city with a unique blend of old and new. Also a city celebrating its 350th anniversary. Tonight, part of the festivities will be at Olympic Stadium. 16 years ago, the site of the Summer Games. And as we begin the summer of 1992, a football championship at stake here on USA Network. It is World Bowl II from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Our matchup, the best in the West against the top team in the East. The Sacramento Surge takes on the Orlando Thunder. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Montreal and Olympic Stadium, where tonight we've got the two best teams in the league, record-wise, at 9-2, and two, but they took very different paths to get here. Orlando won its North American East title more than a month ago. Meanwhile, Sacramento Surge had to fight and scrape all the way down to the last week of the regular season. They beat San Antonio and then struggled to take care of the Barcelona Dragons in their playoff game just to get here tonight. They've done it with two great quarterbacks. Let's bring in our quarterback, my partner Boomer Esiason. And Boomer, you don't get to championship games without high-quality caliber signal callers. Both these teams have them tonight. Well, the reason that these teams are most improved is because of the play at quarterback. On the Sacramento side... It's the uh, World League Offensive MVP, David Archer. He threw 23 TDs and only seven interceptions, but did have trouble last week against Barcelona, not completing one pass to a wide receiver. On the other side, you have young Scott Mitchell, the property of the Miami Dolphins, who's really starting to make a name for himself in this league. Last week against Birmingham, he threw for over 200 yards and three scores without any interceptions. So decidedly different type of players, one being right-handed and the other being left-handed but they are both exciting players for the World League. Every quarterback has its favorite receiver, and these guys have two All-World League performers, and we're talking about Eddie Brown and Joe Howard Johnson. They're good ones. Well, downtown Eddie Brown on the Sacramento side is the only uh, receiver in World League history to go over 1,000 yards. He also scored the most touchdowns with 12. Now, on the other side, that's Joe Howard Johnson. Now, he is the property of the Washington Redskins, and I guess if I'm Coach Gibbs, I'm thinking Joe Howard Johnson, Desmond Howard, Art Monk, the posse, i got to feel good about my wide receiving core. We can talk about these skill position people all night long, but it's what up, what's up front that counts many times, and you've got the best pass rushing group in the World League in Sacramento, and the team that has allowed the fewest amount of sacks in Orlando. Well, one of the reasons that Orlando has allowed the fewest amount of sacks is because of Cunningham their big right tackle. Well, he's been hurt, and they're not sure if he's going to play much tonight. Now, that's going to be the big question of whether or not this big fellow is going to play. He's all world league. He's 310 pounds, stands six foot six. That's a big man to replace. So, who's ever replacing him is going to have their job, their hands full tonight. All right, he could make Scott Mitchell's job a lot easier if he was healthy. We've got helmet cam as always. Rick Andrews and Tom Gerhart will wear it as they play for a ring, a title, and a trophy that Michael Barkan will show you when we come back to Montreal after this. The Brooker boys are here on tour. What's been the highlight of your lake in the stop, Matt? I'd say this new honey barbecue chicken rust 
Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. Get two pieces with baked beans, coleslaw, and a biscuit in a Roundup meal for just $2.99. That was completely unsolicited. The two-piece honey barbecue Roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99 for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. I won't rush, don't be afraid. Power of rust, turn in peace. Power of rust, it's where I want to be. Introducing the hottest two-seater watercraft on the water. The Kawasaki Jet Ski Super Sport. With a sleek V-hull and a powerful 750 engine, the Super Sport is where you want to be. Kawasaki, that's the good time. You are here, she has a traveler's text here. Nah, that's no good. But this is new American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants for less irritation. You've got the edge. USA is being brought to you by Sports Extra Scorephone. Fast, accurate, and dependable. The Sports Extra Scorephone. By Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. Olympic Stadium in Montreal. We get ready for the Sacramento Surge and the Orlando Thunder playing for the World Bowl trophy. Michael Barkan's got a close look. Bark? That's right, Brad. This is what they're playing for. How's that for a game show host? 41 pounds of crystal, the World Bowl trophy in its second year. They've even got law here guarding it. It's etched <laughs> in crystal. The continents on the globe etched right here. <laughs> and when the game ends, one of the teams will parade up into the stands where Chief Operating Officer Joe Bailey of the World League will present the trophy. It's 40, like, you can barely, <laughs> you can barely lift it, but one of these teams is gonna have quite an honor if this guy will get out of the way. Back to you. All right, we're all set. The Sacramento <laughs> Surge that won the toss. <laughs> he may come in there for Rick Cunningham, a tackle. We want those greasy fingertips of Barkan all over that crystal. Tracy Bennett has got it teed up. And back deep for Sacramento, Eddie Brown, who had a punt return touchdown last week, is joined by Junior Robinson. You know, Brad, that's amazing that last week when Sacramento was playing Barcelona that Eddie Brown didn't even get his hands on the football in an offensive play. And you know, he's one of the reasons that that offense on Sacramento leads the league in touchdowns. The Thunders won eight of its last nine. The surge had to win six straight just to get here and did. And tonight, they play for the World Bowl II Championship and we're underway in Montreal. Robinson from the three-yard line. And across the 20 to about the 22, that's where Sacramento will work under the leadership of the most valuable player in the league offensively, David Archer. 23 touchdowns, almost 3,000 yards passing, passing both our World League records. And he's got a good group up front to help him out. Here's the backs and wide receivers. Pringle, Burst, Paul Green, the tight end, Eddie Brown and Carl Parker, the wide receivers. Stevens, the big guy at left tackle, Buttenberg, an all-world league performer, Forsyth, Raider, and Rodgers. 360! 360! Cut! Maybe a yard for Doug DeBose, and that's it. Defensively for Orlando as they close the door in a hurry. The up front, front four, Dunbar, Cilio, Wyatt, and Pressbury. A good crew on that front four. The linebackers, Dixon, Crum, and Rick Andrews wearing helmet cam tonight. Frank and Rogers, the corners, Ephraim Thomas and Todd Crum are the safeties. That defensive front four controlled the game line of scrimmage last week against Birmingham. One of the reasons 90, that Birmingham was not able to get anything three, done offensively. 90, Second and nine. Archer, a quick toss, Eddie Brown, on a little wide receiver screen. He got it across the 30, near the 31, where it'll bring up a third down and two. Well, if you're David Archer, you're happy about that because last week you didn't complete any passes to a wide receiver. You get Eddie Brown right in the flow of the play immediately. 
just a little wide receiver screen where Eddie Brown actually comes down the line of scrimmage, and you can see the offensive linemen come from their position to get out in front of them. A three wide receiver offense for Kay Stevenson surge on third down and two. They were one for ten on third down conversions last week. Archer zips it out. Brown again. The wide receiver's got his second catch. He's got a first down and out of bounds at the 39-yard line for Eddie Brown. Maurice Crum ran him out. Let's listen in to Kay Stevenson, head coach of the surge. You wait, man. We wait for an audible. Since he left, 54 Yale on one on one. Ready? 50, 54 Yale is going to be a quick set pass. Two, two, and you two, hear him three, saying, three, be alert for the audible. He might audible if he sees a different set. defensive set. Green is three, tight end in a slot to the top of your three, screen 16. from the 39 yard line. First and 10. Archer, the quick toss. Brown's got his third. And he's got another first down, Sacramento. You can already see Sacramento's game plan is to get Eddie Brown into the flow of the offense. And they're doing that three out of the first four plays. He's got his hands on the ball. So Kay Stevenson's got to be real happy with that. This is just a little quick hitch pattern. 54 being their quick, quick throw patterns. And those receivers are only going to run five yard patterns where. Archer is only going to take three steps back. Just on the surge side of midfield, the football down on the World Bowl insignia. And a first down, Sacramento, their second of the game. And motion as jumping off sides is Tom Raider. And I think Rick Andrews and USA's helmet cam will give us a good look at Raider's jump from his right guard position there he comes and that'll cost Sacramento five yards and Rick <laughs> waits at the guilty party just so we can make sure as Dan Kemp tells you our referee tonight five yard walk off against Sacramento All right, he's calling spread right, 30 traps. Spread right being the formation. Wide receivers spread out. 30 trap meaning the back right up the middle. That'll be Mike Pringle on first down and 15. 360. Hot. Pringle found a little opening and got the penalty yardage and then some back. A tough run as he got into Thunder territory down near the 47-yard line. Todd Crum and Rick Andrews made the stop. Many people might say it's first and 15. Why are you going to... You know, run the ball. Why don't you try to throw and make a first down? Well, one of the things that you want to do is that you want to try to take advantage of what the defense doesn't expect you to do. In this situation, the defense is expecting a, a pass, and they're going to forget about the run. <laughs> and you get a, bit, a little bit back at a time, and it's not very easy. <laughs> Second down and seven. 360. Parker in motion as Archer rolls to his left, throws on the run, and got Parker, and it looks like another surge first down. And we've been talking about Eddie Brown all night long so far, but let's not forget about Carl Parker. You know, he had 42 catches right behind Eddie Brown, who had 48 catches for Sacramento. So he's a big part of their offense as well. Nice thing about this is that they actually caught Orlando in a blitz, and they had Archer sprinting out away from the blitz. So it was a good offensive call that time by Kay Stevenson. Galen Hall looking on, the Orlando head coach, the World League Coach of the Year as North American East champions. Just, just take him and run him back into the quarterback. <laughs> you can see the defensive coordinator talking to his defensive players. You gotta take your, your offensive player, run him back into the quarterback. No gain on that one. As the Thunder closes the door on Tony Burse. Wayne Dixon, the linebacker, made first contact. 874 X flat. He the Here's another look from Rick Andrews' helmet cam. Well, Rick got a piece of the pile of nothing else. The middle linebackers are paid to do. Outside linebackers are supposed to be around the ball. Second and nine. Eddie Brown in motion. Archer throws and Brown trying to make a one-handed catch. And that's the first misfire of the night for David Archer. Efren Thomas was covering. Well, that time, Dan Cilio actually shot through the gap, and David Archer had to try to get out of his way. And Eddie Brown almost made a great catch.
Take a look at this play by Eddie Brown here. Those gloves that they were wearing, they're tackified gloves, so they'll actually help. Those are the Newman gloves that all wide receivers wear in the NFL. They'll actually help you grab the football if it's a poor throw like that. Well, Dave Archer will have several pair of gloves in the pattern on third and nine. And here comes the blitz. He's got to get rid of it. And down he goes. First tack of the night. And the pressure came from Carl Dunbar. So after three first downs by Sacramento on a third and nine, Archer's sacked for the first time tonight, and that'll force a punt. That time Orlando came with the nickel blitz. They actually brought uh, six guys in the pass rush. Sacramento only had five blocking. Therefore, it was one more than they could block, and Archer had to get rid of the ball quickly. That means if he didn't get rid of it, it was good coverage downfield by the, by the secondary. John needs to kick. Joe Howard Johnson, look out for him. Back in punt return formation, an end-over-end -end kick. And let's see if Sacramento can get to it. They may have at the one-yard line. Tracy Perkins, the guy that got down there and got a hand on it, kept it from going to the end zone, a 44-yard kick. And the Thunder at about its own two-yard line to start offensively for the first time on the night. And watch this special team's play. How special can you get? The Thunder on offense when we come back. We respected what Phil was doing gonna let him know that look if you want to work out lift weights like a normal person huh? ride a bicycle or swim yeah go bowling or do something something Come safe on. just be there all right <laughs> only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it budweiser that was cool yeah, that was great that was crazy <laughs> You thought Banana George Blair had found the fountain of youth. I'm 77 and still barefooting. You'd be half right, because the one he's found is actually for his car. With a little armor all protectant, George restores the beauty of his dashboard and seats. And in minutes, it helps protect his tires from fading and aging. It keeps my car looking almost as good as me. There is a fountain of youth, and we own the patent. Armor all. I hope my teeth don't fall out. You know, if you get into fitness, you're likely to get an athlete's foot. And it could get pretty tough. The irritating itch, the painful cracking, the burning. That's when you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough Act and Tenactin. Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. And Tenactin's clinically proven. No wonder it's the antifungal most recommended by pharmacists. Got a tough case of athlete's foot? Get the medicine that acts tough. Tough Act and Tenactin. Boomer punt coverage doesn't get any better than this one. I'll tell you right now, Tracy Perkins did this on hustle and effort right here. And he's dancing right along that line. I don't know. That's pretty close. It looks like he might have dragged his toe across that line a little bit, but that was a terrific effort. He's put Orlando in a hole. Thunder inside its own two. Motion on the front defensively and incomplete. And boy, could that have been trouble as Robert McWright was closing in on Daryl Clack on that pass. But Goldberg looks to have jumped offside, and that'll give the Thunder a little more room to work. I think Scott Mitchell felt that he had a free play and was just taking a shot, but that's a dangerous place to be doing that down there. Let's take a look at the offense for the Thunder. There's big Scott Mitchell who we've talked about and the numbers he's put up this year. He and Archer, the only two quarterbacks over 2,000 yards passing in the World League. Joining him, Daryl Clack and Roger Vick. Quite a tandem in the backfield. Chris Ford, Grattis Bell, and Joe Howard Johnson, the receiving core. Allen, Aronson, LaSalle, Rose, and Crafts. And watch the two tackles now with Rick Cunningham out. Kevin Allen has switched to the left side. Jerry Crafts to the right. And they're going to see how they can handle the Sacramento Surge pass rush. They give it off to Clack. He got a yard, maybe two, against the Sacramento Surge defense, ranked second in the World League. Sinclair led the league in sacks. Hill, Goldberg, and Bethune, who was tied for third in sacks. Proctor, Jones, and Freeman. The linebacking core, they're ranging. And Robinson and McWright on the corners with Gerhard and Riddick as the safeties. Without a huddle, second down and four. The pass thrown out and nobody home. Boy, that's the second time tonight already. Scott Mitchell's thrown the pass, and I think he'd probably like to pull a string on both of them. And this is going to be roughing the passer. I'll tell you what, you want to get rid of it with the pass rush that's going to be coming from the Sacramento team, but you've got to be careful. 
with what you're doing down there. Proctor put the hit on Mitchell that Boomer's talking about, so it's a free first down. This is going to be an interesting uh, game played by these two sets of teams out on the field, the offense for Orlando and the defense for Sacramento. Orlando loves to run the no huddle. So far, roughing the pass. Definitely roughing the passer. <laughs> you, you could see that he just got a little he just got a little overzealous there. You know, and from my perspective, you know, I I got rid of the ball. Don't hit me, you don't have to hit me. Get hit enough. <laughs> so instead of being at their own two at their own twenty-three. Great play fake by Mitchell. They got it out in the flat. And a first down to Joe Howard Johnson, his first catch of the night. So the all world league receivers have come to play early. Now you're gonna see how Orlando runs their no huddle offense. Everybody's gonna be wearing a wristband. And the quarterback is just going to yell out one number, and that number is going to coincide with the play on the wristband of every player on that offensive team. From the 34-yard line, Orlando with a first down and four wide receivers for Scott Mitchell. Across the middle on the blitz, got Joe Howard Johnson, and he's into the secondary to midfield. Picked nice. up a 15 and another first down. The nice thing about that play, Scott Mitchell told Joe Howard Johnson that the linebacker, if he blitzes, he makes you hot, so you got to look quick. And Joe Howard Johnson did that. Tom Gerhardt will give you a view from helmet cam in the secondary for the surge. And you can see Joe Howard Johnson making a quick look over the middle. If he breaks a couple tackles, it could be six. First down, Mitchell zips it out, completes it to the 46-yard line to Chris Ford, who's dropped in his tracks out there. Nice defensive play by Robert McWright, who got picked on a little bit last week against the Barcelona Dragons. The most difficult thing for Sacramento's defense is going to be substitutions. Orlando does not allow you to substitute on defense. That time now on this play, Sacramento just ran in three players quickly to get their nickel package in on second and six. End around. Johnson got a block. Another first down, Orlando. Joe Howard Johnson with back-to-back -back receptions and now an end around. Good for seven and a first down. Zero trap, four three, zero trap. First down, trap play called. And motion as Flack gets the handoff. Flags all over. Uh, we talked tonight about uh, David Archer and Scott Mitchell being the matchup. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes Eddie Brown, Joe Howard Johnson all night long. Jerry Crafts, he is the biggest in the World League, 6'6", 348. And you can see him looking at his wristband there because Scott Mitchell just gave him a number that coincides with the play on the wristband. Yes. On a first and 15 at the Sacramento 42-yard line. No score with 6.25 to go first quarter here of World Bowl II. <laughs> Willie Davis in motion, full blitz on Mitchell. And he throws to Joe Howard Johnson, complete again to the 31-yard line. 11-yard pickup. Eric Kelson made the tackle. That sound was a nice throw by Scott Mitchell. Some of the things that you practice as a quarterback is throwing, falling away. And you can see that he has to avoid the rush by a little time. He throws the ball falling away, has enough muster on it. Joe Howard Johnson does a nice job of holding on to that football and concentrating, even though he knows he's going to get hit. Second down and four at the 31. You got 55. You got 55. 55 is Michael Jones, who steps up to the line defensively. And Mitchell fires right side, almost picked off by Basil Proctor. And if he could have kept a paw on that one, he'd have been on the way about 65 yards for a touchdown. Ten! And you can hear now. Hey, be ready for cover two! Scott Mitchell is yelling ten, and that's going to be his play, and that's going to be an all-hook. That means all four receivers are going to go down the field and hook. Hey. Galen Hall told him, watch out, it's dime, meaning that that's the Bye defensive ball, player ball. that they're going to play. Right there, right there. Right now, Scotty Mitchell is just telling his team who is hot, right who there. do you have to block. As a quarterback, you want to make sure that everybody knows who they're supposed hot, to block. Hot. He wants plaque on Tracy Perkins, who doesn't blitz. And on third down, Mitchell fires in and out of the hands of Joe Howard Johnson, who took a tag from Lewis Riddick. And I think it's going to be a late hit and a first down, Orlando. The strong safety, Riddick, who is one of the biggest hitters of any secondary player in the league, but this one was late. That's the third penalty for Sacramento on this, on this drive. And being overzealous like this can kill you in a game of this magnitude. 
That's you know that's uncalled for. You have to be smarter than that. You're playing in the championship game. So they have the offside call against Goldberg. Jim Haslett, the Sacramento defensive coordinator, looking out. Then Proctor with a late hit on Mitchell. And now Riddick with a late hit on Joe Howard Johnson. 35 yards of the drive have been off penalties. Two of them have been on third down to give, to give the Orlando Thunder a first down. How at crucial the, is that? At the 16-yard line. And Mitchell throws it out. And his wide receiver is heading to the end zone. And that was Granis Bell. Okay, they're going dime. One backer, maybe Robber. We should work single receiver now. Willie trips, 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 trips. Right now, Galen Hall trip. is telling Scott Mitchell the the formation trips, okay, meaning three receivers to one side. There they are to the top of your screen five on ball, second and ten. At the surge, 16-yard line, 4:20 to go, first quarter, no score. Orlando oh, trying to change that on this drive. Mitchell steps up across the middle, got his man. Bell is hit hard at the ten, but holds on. And it'll be third down and about four upcoming. 90 flat, yeah. 15. John, Jim, give me the over. Dime 42, man Cobra. Former Buffalo Bill John. linebacker. Dime 42, Cobra. man Cobra. All that is is a defense that tells you that they're in their nickel package, meaning that actually dime package, meaning that there are seven defense, five, six defensive backs on the field. Third down and four at the 10 yard line with four wideouts for Mitchell. Sets, gets some pressure, buys some time, and throws a touchdown. Scott Mitchell to Chris Ford. Ten yards, touchdown, Orlando. Brad, that's the one thing that you could not teach a quarterback. Making plays spontaneous decision that time he had a little man in the flat his man was covered he came out he has mobility and he threw the ball back against the green he and his receiver read each other perfectly and tracy bennett tacks on the point after a drive that started at their own two yard line aided by sacramento penalties and the orlando thunder here in the first quarter caps it off as Scott Mitchell finds Chris Ford for a touchdown. This is one of the most difficult ways to have to cover a receiver in the secondary is when your quarterback is broken contained. And that's exactly what Scott Mitchell did. He put the ball right on the money. The Thunder claps first. They lead by seven. Did I predict to invite you to the pool party? Well, maybe next year. On those occasions when you need to make a big splash, there's the Super Soaker 100. It has a powerful air pressure system. Oh, Buffy! A range of up to 60 feet. And a drenching spray. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Also the 50 or the ultimate. The For the finest in women's wear at affordable prices, look to looking pretty. The home of beautiful women's clothing. Fine designs for the working woman as well as after five fashions are complemented by a large array of accessories. Looking pretty is easy at Looking Pretty Main Street Catskill. To compete, you've got to be strong. To win, you've got to be smart. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. Anderson windows give you a warmth and beauty you just can't get with aluminum windows. And they keep you more comfortable, too. So you can see how beautiful Anderson windows are, even with your eyes closed. Get the book that's filled with Anderson window and patio door ideas. Anderson windows available at Williams Lumber and Home Centers in Rhinebeck, Salt Point, and Hudson. Undefeated John David Jackson defends his title. Then Mark Gastineau is out to tackle his next opponent. Budweiser presents USA Tuesday Night Fox, Tuesday at 9. The Thunder scoring drive almost from goal line to goal line in 12 plays. And the man on the right, Chris Ford, against Tom Gerhardt wearing helmet cam. Found an opening and got himself a 10-yard touchdown. And Tracy Bennett set to kick off back deep. Stephon Adams. 
And Mark Stock, the closest to you, number 82. I'll tell you, Brad, the defense of the Sacramento Surge deserve an awful lot of credit for that seven <laughs> points. I, they just three crucial mistakes. Bennett's kick will go to Stock. Three yards deep, and he'll bring it out. And heads for the sideline and found a little room as he gets up to the 29-yard line. That's where Sacramento will go to work offensively. Three minutes and 22 seconds to go first quarter. Chris Ford drives off helmet cam. And Tom Gerhardt finds an opening and scores. And Orlando leads by a touchdown. Tied up on the Delacour case, unable to identify the mystery plot. Luckily, Louie was back. A Freedom Zoom camera. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the freedom to zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. There's only one place on earth, one place where you'll find laughs and thrills and great music for every member of your family. Opryland, USA. For all we have to see and do, call today. There's the cologne that the bird men prefer. Preferred stock cologne from the House of Sexes. Smooth and extra special. Preferred stock cologne. What preferred men prefer? It's the steal of a lifetime. You're gonna love it. Ben Cross, Kate Milligan, and Brian Dennehy. Diamond Fleece on USA, June 17th. Sacramento Surge begins its second offensive series from its own 29-yard line. Last time, three first downs, and then Dave Archer was sacked. 390! 390! Hot! Pringle. Again, fine yardage across the 35 to the 36. Ephraim Thomas and Rick Andrews combine on the hit. Rick Andrews, as always, around the football and involved on the tackle again. Now that's what you want your outside linebacker to look like, folks. Look at him. Watch the helmet, Cam. He's going after the ball. There he is. Ooh. So he almost caused a fumble right there. Actually, the nice thing about Sacramento, their first series, you know, they got Eddie Brown oh, into it. So they got to get him back into it now and, and use him and use his ability to make some big plays. Second and two. Carl Parker in motion. They get it to Pringle again, and I don't think he got the first down. About a half yard short. And you can hear David Archer leading the cheers. Short yardage. We're going to go on a quick count here. All right, so let's go high left, close. All that is I left close with the formation. 14 lead will be an isolation play. I right, we're going to go quick count now. I right close. 14 lead, first sound, first sound. Right? We'll be, it will be given it will be given to the I back, the deep back in the I formation. If we go right over, over the right guard, right tackle area. On third and one, there's the give. A collision, but a first down run. Hold on, Rick. You know, sometimes, Mike Pringle got it. Sometimes the running back coach will see BYOB, be your own blocker. And on that particular play, Mike Pringle had to be his own blocker. Comes down to making about a yard and a half like that. You want a back to be able to do that. Bob Owens there in the middle, helping call the offensive plays for Sacramento. I think I caught Kay Stevenson saying throwback. So this could be a, a, a sprint one way. And throwing the ball all the way back to Eddie Brown. Isolated down here at the bottom. From the 41. Archer rolls left. Let's see if he has enough time. Going deep. Eddie Brown out there and couldn't quite pull it in. And you just wonder, Boomer, if Dave Archer would have had a split second more time if the pass would have been a little bit closer to number 88. One thing about a, a throwback, it's all it's very difficult to protect long enough for the quarterback to be able to make the defense think that he's actually throwing it to the side away from Eddie Brown. That time Eddie Brown made a nice move, actually duping the defensive back into thinking that he was not involved in the play. 
But I think if I were the defensive back and I was covering Eddie Brown, <laughs> I'd be sure I'd be sure to make sure that I got him every play. Archer from the gun. Throws short, got it to Burst, who broke a tackle and got into the secondary. To the 42-yard line. 18-yard pass play. That's what Tony Burst does so well for this team. Tony Burst since uh, 6'216 pounds, and he just took on Rick Andrews, 6'2", 234. Rick Andrews had the coverage with Mr. USA's Mr. helmet cam, and it bounced off again for the second time tonight. Rick Andrews has got to wrap up. You can't just run yourself into somebody. You've got to wrap your arms around their legs, especially a big man like Burst. You can see that he's disgusted with himself. He'll make some more plays tonight. First down at the 42-yard line of Orlando. Final play, first quarter. Archer with a play fake. Goes deep. Post pattern to Parker, and he overshot it. Parker had a step on Malcolm Frank, but Archer overthrew him to end the first quarter. Here's the final play of quarter number one. Maybe a little bump right at the end. At the end of the first 15 minutes, it's Orlando by a touchdown in World Bowl II in Montreal. This summer in Barcelona, 12 of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, and a common threat. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little... Because tonight's game is at a neutral site, fans coming in this evening got to choose between these two cards, and I can tell you after surveying the stadium, this crowd decidedly Orlando. But the loser doesn't have to worry. This number right here on the corner means... If your number's picked, you got a chance at some money if this card is picked. So I'm gonna Do you get one of those go. cards? <laughs> You're not getting one. This <laughs> nope. is just mine, pal. The winning team gets about twice as much money as well. Right now, Orlando leads as we start the second quarter. Second and 10. Surge at the Thunder 42-yard line. Archer has trouble with a snap. And throws wide open. Stock pulls it in for a first down. Oh. Strange-looking play, but... Good for 18 yards and a first down. I'm going to tell you, David Archer just got leveled. That was some kind of play by David Archer making something out of nothing. You take a look at this. He drops the ball from center. Goes down to pick it up. Starts running around. It's a nice block by his back. It just, oh, man, that hurts. But, you know, it doesn't hurt quite as much when your receiver makes a play like this at go. the other end. <laughs> You come back to the well, I just picked up 18 yards in my stats. That's, that's pretty good. To the 25-yard line is Tom Landry. Looks on, former Dallas Cowboy coach, part owner of the San Antonio Riders. 360, 360, hot! Eddie Brown in motion. Archer throws to him in the flat. A good move. Down to the 18-yard line. He wheeled on Todd Crum and picked up a little extra yardage. It'll bring up second down about four. First quarter statistics. Pretty even with the exception of time of possession down there on the bottom. One thing that we don't have on there is penalty yards and what those penalties meant. And the penalties against the Sacramento defense gave Orlando almost seven points. They gave them 35 of their 98 yards on the touchdown drive. Second down and four. Four, three, set! Pringle and Burst in a dual set. And now Burst comes up on the left wing. And here comes the blitz. Cut. Pringle up the middle, got hit and bounced off, got positive yardage. I think Rick Andrews is the first guy that got a helmet and a helmet right. cam on him. It's a one and a half. A yard and a half to go, Let's coach. Go. Short yardage. Let's go, uh, one and a half. Yeah. Uh, short yardage, yeah. Short yeah. yardage. All right, let's go. I left, uh, I left post 19 power. Uh, All right, oh, short yardage right, means the personnel. They're going to bring in extra close. big guys. 19 power. We're going to go on two. Short and, and they're going to run 19 Oscar power. 19 check. odd number means that you're running the ball to the left. Your eye back and your fullback are going to go left, and it's going to be wide left. Third down, a yard and a half. We'll call it two. Pringle got outside. First down and more. First and goal, Sacramento. Todd Crum ran him out. 
Pringle running hard tonight, has it to the eight yard line. Take a look at this block on our helmet cam, Andrew. That's Carl Parker, a wide receiver, in there in a the short yardage situation, making a block like that. That's how valuable Carl Parker is to this football team. Did he block like that in Cincinnati? Right, right, he played with us in Cincinnati, you know, and he was a good player there. He just got caught in a numbers game. He's good enough to play in the NFL. Quick snap, first and goal. Archer pump fakes, goes just over the outstretched arms of Paul Green, his tight end. David Archer did a nice thing that time. Look where he puts the football. It's low, and the only guy that can get his hands on it is his offensive player. If he doesn't reach it, it goes out of the end zone, it doesn't hurt anybody, line back up and do it again. There's how Rick Andrews viewed it. Although the, completion. Although that wasn't a completion, as a quarterback, you want to make sure that you don't want to lose yards down here. You definitely don't want to turn the ball over. Second and goal, they fake the draw and go to Eddie Brown incomplete on a slant. Glenn Rogers, all-world league corner, was there covering. So the best corner in the league against the best receiver in the league, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, you got him fucking burned, huh? See, David's a little upset with himself, but, you know, he had, he had the blitz in his face, and he just tried to get rid of the ball quickly. He just threw it behind Eddie Brown. Dave Archer, 7 out of 12 right now. And looking for a little third down magic at the Orlando 8-yard line. 4-3 set! From the shotgun. 360! 360! Eddie Brown, the motion man. Archer rolls right. In trouble and down he goes. Dean Witkowski with a second sack of the night for Orlando. Second time tonight, Orlando comes up with a third down sack. And it'll force a field goal attempt by Sacramento. The important thing here, Brad, is that Brad, uh, that uh, David did take a sack, but he didn't lose that much yardage. He was still in field goal range. You want to get some points out of here. You want to leave here positive. And try to slow down the momentum of the Orlando offense by leaving them on the sideline. There's the numbers on Kerry Blanchard, his long of 42 yards. Last week he had a 46-yarder in the playoffs, though, and he drills one from 32. So the Sacramento Surge don't get the touchdown, but they do get three with 10.44 left. First half, Orlando leads 7-3 over Sacramento. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. What's so daring about new Prism Car Polish? It's not how you put it on, but how you take it off. Introducing new Prism Car Polish. It's the first and only spray-away approach to car polishing. Just wipe it on and spray it off. And in half the time, you get a durable shine. No huffing, no puffing, no buffing. New Prism, the only spray-away car polish. Models one starting under 17.9. Yeah, Coco, that made me go inside the ball. David Archer knows that he had a first and goal at the eight yard line and couldn't get it in the end zone. As head coach Kay Stevenson looks on, they did get the field goal though to cap a 56 yard drive. Uh, Raj Bethal, the owner of the Orlando Thunder, looking on with a big smile. That's a half-hearted wave by the Orlando head man. <laughs> it's funny to watch owners at ball games. You know, I mean, they're excited. They just don't want to show you. Except for the guy down in New Orleans, Benson. I mean, he, he's, he's pretty excited. He gets out the umbrella indoors. Yes. Here's the kick. Joe Howard Johnson, two yards deep. 
And the surge does a nice job to bring him down before he can get to the 20-yard line. 10 minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the first half as Scott Mitchell and the Orlando Thunders offense comes back on the field. His team leading here in Montreal by four. Get into Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up. Never let you down. This is where it happened. The breakthrough in urethane chemistry that created a car polish so technologically advanced, one application lasts an entire year. Finish 2001. The car polish you use only once every 12 months. This old car's been badly neglected. Its finish appears destroyed. With no rubbing, no buffing, Finish 2001 with its urethane formula safely brings back the showroom shine, a rich, deep gloss shine that lasts an entire year. We tested Finish 2001 against other leading polishes, even some that claim to protect your car against fire or against acid. And the test results? Nothing but nothing protects or shines better than Finish 2001. The 12-month car polish with a 100% money-back guarantee. Finish 2001 is available at these fine stores. Here's the wristbands of the Orlando Thunder players that Boomer's been talking about all night. Part sweatband, part homework. All right, the interesting thing now that's happening here is that players on uh, the defensive side of Sacramento and the offensive side of Orlando are all wearing a wristband just like this. Orlando has 61 plays on it, and the defense for Sacramento has uh, 19 plays on it. And each of these team captains, the quarterback for, uh, uh, for Orlando, Mitchell, is yelling a number that corresponds with the play. And you'll see everybody on both sides of the football reading their wristband to find out what play that they, their coaches want them to be running. Well, this one was successful, that's for sure. Willie Davis, first down catch. Pick up of 17. Now let's see if we can hear Scott Mitchell yell the number. 5-3, five, 5-3, three. Five, three, 53. He's yelling 53, so now you can see all the guys reading what play is number 53. Now I wish I knew that answer, but I, I would bet that it's going to be a pass. And I would imagine it's going to be a pass to Joe Howard Johnson running a deep out pattern. How's that, Brad? Johnson the closest to the right tackle of the four wide receivers that you see. Mitchell from the shotgun. On uh, first and 10, Orlando at its own 35. Mitchell's going to go left side and got it complete again. Willie Davis shot of bounds, picked up nine. It wasn't, really, it wasn't uh, Joe Howard, but it was Willie, but he did run the deep out part. Let's see if we can hear what number he calls this time. I think this time I'd call Daryl Clack's number. Let's see. Second down and a short one. He's yelling 2-4, so he might, he might just call Daryl Clack's number off the left side here. There it is, and Black close to a first down, but maybe close enough to measure. I think he got a pretty good spot. Orlando leads it 7-3 here in Roll Bowl 2. Brad Nessler, Boomer Esiason, and Michael Barkan with you. And Galen Hall, the World League Coach of the Year, his team out in front 7-3. Now, the way Sacramento is doing it, they actually have somebody on the sideline next to Coach Hazlitt there holding up a piece of paper with a number on it. And every one of the defensive players on Sacramento is reading that number and looking at their wrist corresponding to their defensive call. Completion out to Chris Ford, and Robert McWright came up to make the hit. So let's see what the number is going to be here, and we can correspond it. Okay, number 12. Michael and there they are checks. checking it. Hey, first, Tracy, Tracy. So he's, telling, he's telling right yes. now what's going on here now. Number 12, all the defensive players know that. Now Scott Mitchell hey, is giving jump, a number over jump. here to the offensive players. <laughs> Second down and five. Big hit and a loss on the play. Or whatever number they did for Sacramento, they want to keep that number. Anyone who forgets the number on the Orlando side. They probably want the number on the license plate of Bill Goldberg and Nate Hill who made the tackle. Number 19. 19 on defense. Might get too deep and get Joe. May get a blitz. I wonder if Gallen knows what 19 is. Yeah, they're going zero. 
He knows his quarterback's number 19, and he's in shotgun formation on third down. 19 is going to be blitz. 19 is going to be a blitz for Sacramento. 55, you got 44. Jack Mitchell sure thinks it's Michael Jones coming. Let's see if he's right. Here they come. Hot, hot. He's right. <laughs> Quick slant, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And there is, there's the case where the defense had the right defensive call on. Scott Mitchell saw the blitz. He told his, his wide receiver to be, be awake. The defensive player made the play. He executed his end of the play as where Scott Mitchell, the offensive receiver for Orlando, did not execute their end of the play. Seven and a half minutes to go in the half and a punting situation for Ray Criswell. Eddie Brown back to return for Sacramento. Takes it on the fly and lost the ball. And Orlando's got it at the nine-yard line. Andrews comes up with a football. Malcolm Frank, I think, is the guy that made the hit on Eddie Brown. There's one rule that a punt returner always lives by. If the ball comes down inside the 10-yard line, do not field the football. He received that ball on the 5-yard line. Eddie Brown should not have received that ball. He should have just let it drop. Helmet Cam made the recovery. Take a look. You can see him speed up and see that ball on the ground. Pump it and pump it. Let's go get it. He smothered it just inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Orlando. Another gift from Sacramento to the Thunder. Flips on Mitchell. They give it off on a quick opener. And Flack can't find any room against Bill Goldberg. Let's see if we can get these numbers here. 11! 11! 11! Seven minutes to go, first half. Four wideouts for Scott Mitchell on second down and goal. Just a little flat pattern. Got it to Davis. Touchdown. So far tonight, Sacramento has made miscue after miscue on defense, and Orlando has taken advantage of those gifts. Exactly what you want to do when you're an offensive player for Orlando. All this is is a little rollout. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a dangerous throw. If he doesn't put that ball on the money, Tracy Perkins take it, takes it the other way for a touchdown. Tracy Bennett in for the point after. And the Orlando Thunder now has stretched the lead out to 11. As Scott Mitchell throws his second scoring toss of the night. Willie Davis, who had a couple last week, has his first one tonight. 14-3 Thunder. This year, the Lake Edna Players present the Wild West Review. Tonight, director Lauren Clark tried to motivate her cast of cowboys with new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. The chicken was unbelievable, as were a few of the performances. Try the two-piece Honey Barbecue Roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99, for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. impress me you have to be good looking popular reasonable <laughs> smart <laughs> learn and know a good thing when you see it so if you really want to impress me you just have to be <laughs> a cute little escort go out in style for $168 a month at your local Ford dealer at Prada's Home Decorating Center, you'll find the largest selection of Delmar custom window treatments in Columbia and Greene counties. If your decorating needs call for micro or mini blinds, duet shades, vertical blinds, or pleated shades, Prada's has them all at 60% off. As always, free estimates, guaranteed installation, and expert sales assistance. That's 60% off on all Delmar custom window treatments, only at Prada's Home Decorating Center, 751 Warren Street, Hudson, or call 828-1613. Painted me, Mr. Diaz. For the secret passion of Robert Clayton on USA tomorrow night. 
All the World League teams represented here at World Bowl II. Reggie Williams, general manager of the New York, New Jersey Knights. And on his right, Miles Davis, head coach of the Knights, who put together six straight wins at the end of the year but didn't make the playoff round. The Thunder, the North American East champions, led by Scott Mitchell, have the lead here, 14-3. to Many people felt that the Knights were the best team going into the final weeks of the season, much like the 49ers were in the NFL. Maybe the best team isn't here. Of course, the folks in Orlando and Sacramento would have a lot of arguments for that as the kickoff come up. Scott and Brown back deep. Mark Scott again, three yards deep in the end zone. He's going to have to hurry to get to the 20. Did and got out to the 25. Had a nice block. Coming up, we've got boxing Tuesday night. Fights with John David Jackson taking on Pat Lawler. Plus the first fight on the undercard, former football star turned boxer Mark Gastineau. As he tries to keep his unbeaten streak alive, that's USA Tuesday night fights. 9 o'clock this I've, Tuesday. I fought with that guy a few times back in the did. pocket. I put him down a few times. Wayne Fonts, head coach of the Detroit Lions. His brother coaching here, part of the uh, World League crew for Sacramento, Over John Fonts. First down, the surge one, one, at its one, own 26-yard line. One, zero, cut. Again, they go to the ground game, and very little inside for Doug DeBose. Maybe a yard, that's all. Now, Sacramento's offense has been able to move the ball, especially when they throw on first and second down. I'd like to see them get Eddie Brown back in ball. At 54 Yale, it's just going to be a short little hitch pattern, probably to Eddie Brown. Since he right. 54 Yale on one on one. Ready? They threw this on their opening drive. Good for a first down to Eddie Brown. Here it's second down and nine. Four three set. He's gonna have a tough time getting it to him because the cornerbacks are gonna be rolled up on him. One thirty. That corner is Glenn Rogers, and instead they hand it off inside. Well, what he did, he got to the line of scrimmage and saw that the defensive backfield setup wasn't good for 54 Yale to pass away. So he audible to one thirty. Okay, thirty meaning it. An inside four, handoff, four. Hey, up hey, the hey, middle. Hey, Good job by David Archer purple, taking purple. what the defense is giving him. Purple, let's go gun loaded right, zero thirty nine hot. Purple, purple. Purple, got purple in. Go, no, go gun, go gun, sensey right. Gun, sensey right, right. Uh, zero thirty nine hot right on one on one. Ready? Probably just going to try to hit a little go flat ahead, pattern to the, to the right side of the field, the back out of the backfield, or the inside seven. receiver, the tight end into the flat. Orlando's yeah, secondary yeah, coach. So Hartchick has called his play, so is David Archer, and he tosses it out to a wide open, Tony Burst. Broke a tackle, and got across the 45 to the 47-yard line. The interesting thing that's going on now between these two teams is that the Orlando defense is taking chances regular with blitzes, regular and the Sacramento regular offense regular is taking an even bigger chance by leaving, putting guys out into the pattern. And you can see that there's nobody to cover the back out of the backfield because they're flooding the zone that has been voided by the blitz. And bursts the load. You can see how he's not going to be brought down by one man. Tony doesn't run it a lot, but he had 22 catches on the regular season, and he's added a couple I more tonight. Kept the tight end in there. First down surge from its own 48, trailing 14 to 3. Archer got leveled as he tried to get it to Parker. Boy, what a hit by Willie Wyatt put on Dave Archer. Well, let's not forget about the front. Defensive line of the Orlando Thunder. We talked about Sacramento and them leading the league in sacks. But this is a pretty good defensive line on Orlando's side as well. Wyatt, Cilio, Dunbar, and Presbury. The lightest one being Presbury, and he stands 6'2", 270 pounds. Orlando used a 3-4 defense until midseason, then switched to the 4-3, and they've been much more effective since second and 10 third. Archer from the gun. Has time. Incomplete. And Malcolm Frank says, I didn't touch him. I don't know. Eddie Brown, the intended receiver. He might have been there a little bit early, but if there's not a flag on the play, it's a heck of a play by Frank. <laughs> to tell you the truth, he was right there. Did the right thing, knocking that ball away. Let's take a look at this. Let's see how close it really is. Nice break on the ball by Frank. That's a good play. That left hand right on the back of the pads. He's the guy that caused the fumble of Eddie Brown's earlier that led to a Orlando touchdown. And he forces a third and ten Four here for seven. Sacramento. We'll see if uh, Orlando blitzes here. They're showing blitz. They drop out of it. 
Archer in trouble again. He's going to try to run for it, but he's got a lot of yards to pick up, and he won't get there. <laughs> Malcolm Frank with a tackle. It'll be fourth down at about five. And Sacramento will have to give it up with four minutes left in the first half. And they trail 14-3. Orlando's defense is bending a little bit but not breaking, making the big play on third down. As for Sacramento's defense, especially earlier in the game on third down, made really important miscues, mistakes. John Lee's first punt, he dropped down for Tracy Perkins to bat back to the two-yard line. Let's see how he can do inside the 20 this time. But Joe Howard bounced him back this time. He hits it a mile in the air. And Perkins again trying to get down there, but he can't get to this one. Touchback. And with three minutes and 29 seconds left in the second quarter, it'll be time for the Orlando Thunder offense from its own 20 when we come back. Have you ever wondered how a professional painter can always get such great results. Because no matter what the job, he'll always start off in the exact same place. At a Sherwin-Williams store, there's only one paint this good, and there's only one place you can get it. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. At age 74, I'm the oldest Ironman triathlete. Jim Ward has a hobby. It's called staying young. It's a workout. That's why he uses Armor All protectant on his dash, seats, and especially his tires. Rubber can age and crack, but Armor All penetrates to keep his tires looking like new. Jim says his tires never seem to get old. People say the same thing about Jim. I like a good looking car. It makes me feel good. There is a fountain of youth, and we own the patent. Armor All. I gotta run. You were here. He had the traveler's checks here. That is a problem. Well, was. Now there's American Express Traveler's Checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. To me, when a woman sweats, it just isn't sexy. Of course a guy's going to sweat sometimes, but when you're close, who wants a guy that smells? Get closer with Arid Extra Extra Dry, the anti-odor antiperspirant. I trust Arid. Come to a place where so many people are rich, gorgeous, and dead. Silk stockings on USA, tomorrow at 9. World Bowl II here in Montreal with Boomer Esiason and Michael Barkan. I'm Brad Nessler as Orlando leads 14-3 and works from its own 20-yard line. Nice play fake by Mitchell and throws out of the flat first down to Tommy Stowers who got it to the 32-yard line to pick up a 12. Robert McWright made the tackle. I'm real impressed with Scott, Smith, uh, Scott Mitchell's ability to move around. You know, he's a big man at 6'6", 230 pounds. He's got nifty feet. He's able to get around. Again, the no huddle of the Thunder offense. He's calling 53, so you'll have a deep out comeback on the left side. It should be one-on-one -on -one coverage. 55, Rodney, 55. He makes you hot. First and 10, Orlando from the 32. There's the throw Boomer talked about. And incomplete intended for Willie Davis, who made a couple of catches on McWright out there earlier. The nice thing that Orlando's doing is they're putting a single receiver to one side and taking one-on-one. -on -one. Now they got dime. There's your defense, number 12 on one side. It's number five. They have it written on a man. Number 12 is going to be your nickel defense, your dime package. And they're calling number 12. This could be a middle screen versus a uh, defensive uh, zone coverage. Let's see what happens. Second and 10. Mitchell again goes to Davis. Got him. McWright trying to ride him out, but I think he got the first down by a half yard or maybe a half length of the football. Picking on Robert McWright over there on the right corner. We're going to four out. We're going to four out. Yeah, don't go four right. Number 53, 89 comeback. Trip. 53, 89 comeback. Run a four. Trip. Yeah, trips. Okay, he's running 89 combat, and he tell Willie to run a four route, which is a hook route. The defense on, Mikey, looks like they're running number 12. 
which is also a nickel defense, meaning that they have six defensive Number backs in the game. Willie Davis Number already with four catches Josh. for 45 yards and a touchdown. He's to the top of your screen. And you got to watch out for the blitz here, and you'll probably throw it down low here quick. Here it comes. Tried to go to Joe Howard Johnson, who really got tagged by Helmut Kahn. Tom Gerhardt made the hit and the incompletion. Let's take a look and a listen from the free safety, Tom Gerhardt. Oh, Joe Howard will remember that one, I think, for a couple of plays. I'll tell you, if I'm the, if I'm the defense of Sacramento, and you know when you're blitzing and those receivers hey, are coming over the out. middle like that real quick, like I would just keep blitzing and go sitting right, there waiting for those right. receivers. 44, you got 44, you got 24. Again, Scott Mitchell's Scott doing Mitchell. a nice job at the line of scrimmage, just making sure everybody knows who they got. Let's see if they get them all. Mitchell, that one, again, somebody got a piece That's of it. That's my fault, man. I got or he was hit as he threw, whichever, it's incomplete. Third and ten. This could be a wide receiver screen running down the line of scrimmage. The coaches wanted trips, meaning three wide receivers to one side. They don't get it. Final play before the two-minute warning is third and ten, Orlando. You gotta watch out for the blitz again. They've had success with the blitz Sacramento has on defense. They back out of it this time. Mitchell in trouble, and he's going to go down. No, he got rid of the ball. They will call it an incomplete pass, no sack. No in the grass here. George Bethune had Vic Scott Mitchell all wrapped up, but Mitchell somehow got his left hand out of there and threw the incompletion. As you take another look, we're at the two-minute warning. Actually, 1.56 left in the half, and Orlando will have to punt when we come back. Panasonic presents a new breed of smooth operator. The new smooth operator rechargeable razor unites the old-fashioned closeness of a warm, wet shave with the convenience and no-nick comfort of an electric. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. Smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you'd be. Will our new lightning blade actually make your job as easy as this? Well... Lightning stays sharp longer, cuts easier than the blade you're using, or your money back. From Washington comes important news for anyone suffering from eczema, psoriasis, or other skin itches and rashes. The government has just approved for sale without prescription. Extra strength medicine doctors prescribe for these problems. It's a new Cortisone 10 the maximum strength you can buy to relieve irritating itching and rash. Why suffer when now you can get the strong relief you need? Get Cortisone 10 with doctor-prescribed relief for itch and rash. Now available without prescription. Coming up at halftime, the best of the World League in 92. Some great shots and great plays and helmet cam and all the rest. Boomer and I will take a look at first half highlights and a great halftime show here at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. So stick around. It's one minute and 56 seconds away. Criswell almost had it blocked. Eddie Brown will take a shot at this one from the 25. And got about four out of it, and that's it. Let's check in with Mike Barkin. Bark with NFL Coach of the Year, Detroit Lions head man Wayne Fonts. And coach, I know your brother John's back there with the uh, Sacramento Surge defensive assistant. Can you can you tell his handiwork on the field? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's a, a, I think it's a great football game right now. It's 14-3. to three, the, the Thunder had a couple of good breaks to put him here, two touchdowns. It's uh, anybody's game right now. The, I think the thing that uh, is happening right now that the, the Thunder are having great success going to the quarterback's left. So uh, maybe they'll adjust in the second half, maybe stop that. I know a lot of folks are wondering, you sent some people to the World League, but they want to know about a guy like Andre Ware. Would you send him here to get some more seasoning? Well, Andre Ware right now, uh, we feel is one of our top players. And uh, uh, I think this 
this league is a tremendous league for many, many players. But right now, Andre has a chance to be our number one quarterback, so we're going to hold on to him and make sure that uh, he doesn't get hurt. All right, Brad. Dave Archer is intercepted by Malcolm Frank, taking it the other way, and Archer saves it being a touchdown. He's been a thorn in Dave Archer's side all night, and he just picked one off and went 39 yards the other way. That's the worst feeling in the world right now. David David Archer just wants to go on the bench, sit in the corner, and get everybody away from him. And, you know, actually, though, he, he kept his poise and he made a tackle. Now, if his defense can keep them from scoring a touchdown, that could be the biggest tackle in, in the game tonight. So you, you know you did something wrong. You know you made a mistake. You got to go back and you got to go fight through this mess down here and make the play. And it's a good play by David Archer. Obviously, he didn't want to throw the interception. Frank makes a nice break of the ball. But he does make the tackle and he stops, stops Orlando from scoring a touchdown. You don't know how important that is right now. That could come back to, to really help Sacramento in the second half. Again, first and goal, Orlando at the Sacramento 9. Mitchell already with two touchdown passes tonight. This time he's going to try to run for one. And he paid the price at the two-yard line. Lewis Riddick with a hit. That's probably why Coach Foss doesn't want Andre Ware playing in this one. He doesn't want to take shots like this. Did he get a timeout? Yeah, he got it. Okay. Hey, clock is still. 1.15. Okay. And the clock stopped. Scott Mitchell, who runs for seven yards, and then Lewis Riddick comes up from the secondary, maybe the hardest-hitting safety in the World League, and you'll see it coming up at the end of this play. But still, Orlando with a 14-3 lead, and they're closing in on the Sacramento end zone again. We were all tied up on the Delacour case, unable to identify the mystery block. Luckily, Louie was back. A Freedom Zoom kit. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the Freedom to Zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. Did I forget to invite you to the pool party? Well, maybe next year. On those occasions when you need to make a big splash, there's the Super Soaker 100. It has a powerful air pressure system. Oh, Buffy! A range of up to 60 feet. And a crunching spray. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Also the 50 or the ultimate, the 200. I remember it felt like the hottest day of the year. I was all alone with the kids. Then it happened. The cooling went out. Mommy, I'm hot! I had to do something fast, and it had to be right. I called the green dealer. He was there in no time. He said he'd take care of the problem, and he did. What could have been a very hot day in our lives was made right, thanks to our green dealer. You know it's right if it's green. Malcolm Frank with two of the biggest plays of the game, forcing a fumble on a punt return and an interception moments ago that set Orlando up inside the 10-yard line of Sacramento. 15 steal, I want it. 15 steal, this should be. Over the left side, Darrell Clack over the left side. Following Stowers, his blocker, but he didn't get there. Stay on top of him, stay on top of him, stay on top of him. Now you got third down and goal. And Orlando's going to take another timeout <laughs> with 102 left. Fox still winding. Now it's stopped at 101. Scott, Scott Mitchell wanted to make sure that the referee heard him call timeout. <laughs> we heard him way up here. You want to go slant? Now there's a nice. It's a nice thing to take a look at Kerwin Bell there, who was the starter of, of, of the Orlando team, and he's right there with Galen Hall trying to call the play, and he realized that you know he'd love to be playing, but he's right in the game, so there's a lot to be said about that as well. what I would think 93 would be for them. They're probably going to have their four wide receivers set in there. They'll probably spread them out. The inside guys will probably run flats, and the outside receivers will run little slant patterns. We'll see what happens here. 
third down and goal. Orlando, Michael Jones looking for the call defensively. You see they're going to spread them out now. That's what they're doing. Third and goal at the two. There's the pass. And it is almost intercepted. Robert McWright had his hands on it and couldn't hold on. I'll tell you what, if he would have held on to that ball, he could have ran back 102 yard touchdown. Now let's bring it back to David Archer making the tackle. And only and only forcing a field goal here. Sounded Could have like, given up touchdown. Sounded like Scott Mitchell said somebody tipped it. Let's see if Bethune got a hand yep, on he it. Did. He did. And McWright got his hands on it. Field goal attempt to 20 yards coming up for Tracy Bennett. The all-world league kicker. A chip shot for him. And he nails it through to stretch the lead to two touchdowns. Okay, if you're Sacramento right now, you're breathing a sigh of relief because you only gave up three points. You're down only by two touchdowns. Your offense has come back from this before all year long. You know, he's got to feel a little bit lucky right here. But, you know, he made a play. He felt like he threw an interception. He feels terrible. But he went down and made the tackle. Good job, G. Good job. I mean, he's just thanking his defense now for only giving up three points. Hey, Stevenson with a little wink to Vance Hammond, part of that defensive front that put some pressure on Mitchell on that third and goal. And so the surge will have 45 or 50 seconds to work with before halftime. I'll tell you what, you know, the MVP of this game wins a pretty big award, doesn't he? That he does, brand new car. Right now I'd say Malcolm Frank's the front runner. Well, Scott Mitchell's having a pretty good night. We'll see what happens. Frank's giving them a couple of gifts down close. So see you quarterbacks stick together. <laughs> Actually, though, I'll tell you what. Long way to go. Let's not, let's not worry about who's driving that car home. But I'll tell you, nice MVP of the World League. Drives home in a, in a car. That's, that's not too bad. Scott Mitchell looks like a giant version of Tom Cruise. And right now his team is cruising 17-3. to But Sacramento not done here before halftime. Let's see what Bennett does with a kickoff. With Scott and Brown, the deep duo back for Sacramento. That's important for Sacramento's cover team not to let up now. 54 seconds is a lot of time for David Archer to go down and get some points. Bennett will kick it away. And Mark Stock again. This time we'll have a chance on about the two-yard line. And he had to fight his way just to get to the 20. Nice coverage by Orlando and Tommy Stowers who made the tackle on the special team. So Dave Archer is 80 yards away. From trying to close the gap on this one. And the surge will go with its two minute offense right, with a full complement of timeouts. Important thing here is just take what they give you. Hopefully, one of your receivers or one of your backs will make a run after the catch. Call timeout. Just keep going. You'd be surprised how much feel that you can chew up. In this amount of time, just taking little dinks and dunks over the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers. Archer, high snap in the shotgun. He pulled it down and threw across the middle to Burst. Tony Burst, he's been the offense for the surge. First down. Timeout. Timeout. They got it called with 38 seconds remaining in the half. Actually, they're not calling it. World League, much like college, that clock stops until they set the set the stick. Archer throws intended for Parker, and he didn't turn around or turned late. Incomplete. Second and ten. He's so far off, man. David is just telling Carl, just play football. The man so far off, just go don't down, turn around, and I'll hit you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Carl. My fault. Here we go. Gun, gun, Eddie Wright, Rose, 866X cross on one on one. Ready? The nice thing about David Archer right now, as you can see, that you know far, he's been Paul. around. He's 30 years old. He's got control. Four, three, he's, he's confident. He's not, he's not all over the place. He's not panicking. Cut. Looks left, now right, and may run with it. Archer gets what he can, got a first down and out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Nice scramble by Dave Archer, pick up a 13. The interesting thing there, he forgot to send his man in motion. Yeah. <laughs> he forgot to put his man in motion. 
You can't remember everything sometimes. Well, you know, we just got over saying that he's all poised, he got everything together, and he forgets to put the guy in motion. But, hey, again, you know, he's uh, he's resourceful. You know, he's making things happen. He's better hurry up, though. He's running out of time on the down clock. Eddie Brown in motion. That's the game clock in the corner. On first down, Archer throws to Stock, who's got it. Tried to lateral to Parker. I don't know what that gained, other than maybe a fumble. Clock stop with 14 seconds left. And no official signal, so we assume it's Sacramento on the bottom of the pot. Did Dave Archer get down and recover the fumble? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> if he did, he's amazing. <laughs> Timeout, Sacramento. I'll tell you what, that is that is true. that is amazing if you recovered this fumble. Let's take a look at this. Let's see what happens here. You can see Stock goes down and catches the ball. Makes a nice play, tries to get up. You know, Parker, Carl Parker fumbles the handoff. And there's David Archer sitting right there. And Archer gets on the football. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Well, he's gonna make a bad name. We gotta keep doing that now. <laughs> to see my quarterback coach says, "You gotta get on get down downfield fumble." Forget that. <laughs> you don't even like running in minicamp. Oh, uh, that's right. I gotta tell you this though. David Archer now has made two plays that really, if you think about it, are not gonna show up in the stats at all. Now he made an important tackle on a return of an interception. And he, I don't know what he's doing downfield. <laughs> Recovering fumbles, but that is a huge play. They still have 14 seconds. They get about another 15 to 20 yards, which is uh, quite possible here. They still have two timeouts left. We're looking over the shoulders of the Sacramento Surge assistant coaches from behind their box. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to line up over there. I still got my X around. Right. You got your X crossed. Okay. You just line up and run the What he's going to try to do is hit Eddie Brown on a crossing pattern. The dangerous thing about that is that that will be in the middle of the field. They are. And Eddie Brown has to be aware of how much time is left on the clock. Both Iowa State grads, they are roommates, and obviously Eddie Brown is Archer's favorite receiver. Let's see if he can get it to him on first down at the 42-yard line of Orlando. And now Eddie Brown. Get out there. Eddie Brown is the inside receiver of the three up on the top of your screen. He's going to be running a crossing route. And let's see what happens here. Archer, there he is. Got it to him. 30, 20, Brown. Oh, out of bounds at the six-yard line. That's the way it was supposed to work. First and goal, Sacramento. Five seconds left. And now do you kick a field goal or do you try to go for a touchdown? You call timeout, you discuss it, you see if you can get a playoff within five seconds. Call timeout right here and you discuss it. There's no reason to even make a hasty decision. Personally, I go for the I go for the field goal right here and take the points if be happy. And let's see what they talk about on the sideline now. Boy, Eddie Brown showed his 4-3-7-40 speed on that one to get down to the seven-yard line. In fact, just inside the seven. And he looks like my Eddie Brown in Cincinnati. Look at that. <laughs> Dave Archer, when he was uh, starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, threw some balls to downtown Charlie Brown, and here it's uptown Eddie Brown. The K. Stevenson has decided to go for field goal. Smart move. Take the points. Now, don't worry about it. You know, get out of here. Your team offensively has played exceptionally well, and so has its defense. It just made stupid mistakes to give Orlando some points. And Orlando, on the other hand, has really capitalized on those things. So you give credit to Orlando's offense, but you know if you're a Sacramento coach right now, you're feeling good about the way your team has played if you just take away the stupid penalties and fumble. All right, now we got to have it. Let's go. So Gary Blanchard in right, to attempt to snap. Ready? a 24-yard field now. goal. Dave Archer, the quarterback, is the holder. Three. And you saw Let's Dave Archer show poise and confidence in running his team right down the field for a chance at a field goal. Nice two-minute drill by David Orchard. Blanchard from 24. Puts it right down the middle. So still a second left before halftime. But the surge with a good-looking drive gets three points. Two plays that this, that this man right here was involved in that really doesn't make sense for a quarterback to be involved in. A tackle and a fumble recovery. 
that kept his team in this football game. 17 to 6. You think he wants to win pretty badly or what? I think so. We had a chance to talk to him before the game in the Surge locker room. And I said, Dave, you a little nervous? He said, if I wasn't nervous, I wouldn't have an answer. He said, there's the guy that got him the big gainer to put him in field goal range, Eddie Brown. And, of course, Eddie's trying to make up for having fumble on a punt return earlier that really gave a gift to the Orlando offense. You know, Brad, as we look at Scott Mitchell here, you know, the, the World League has done different things for different players. You take Dave Archer, for instance. And here's a guy that's been around. He's played in a few different NFL teams. He's had some success and, unfortunately, hasn't been in the league. You know, he's trying to get back into that league. And he's showing that he can still play this game effectively and be a good leader. And he showed a lot of poise. Now, on the other side, you have Scott Mitchell, a young player who hasn't had hardly any time behind Dan Marino and Scott Seekiel down in Miami. And look what the league has done for these two players and given the opportunities uh, for them to further their playing career. John Knees will kick off. Gratis Bell and Joe Howard Johnson, the deep men that don't expect a deep pick, I wouldn't think, with a second left in the first half. There's the line drive. And it'll be handled by Bell at the nine-yard line. And we are at halftime. Make sure Michael Barkin is not anywhere near that pistol. <laughs> Galen Hall, his club out in front, 17 to 6 oh. in intermission. And so far, nobody heading to the locker. And we have another play. Yes. On the kicking team, that penalty is declined at the end of the half. So the half is over here in World Bowl II in Montreal. The Sacramento Surge has made some mistakes, and Orlando has taken advantage of them. Let's check in with Michael Barkan and the Surge head coach. Okay, briefly, you gave up 10 points after turnovers. How are you going to score some more points in the second half? Well, we, uh, we've got the ability to score points, and uh, we got to get in and regroup. We're turning the ball over, and uh, hey, we've had to come back before. We've had to come down the hard road, so our, our kids will be ready to go. All right, good luck. Brad, back to you. All right, guys. Halftime at the World Bowl in Montreal, and the Orlando Thunder leads it 17 to 6. I could spend all day here. Wouldn't leave much time to fish. Don't you have enough lures? You can never have enough lures. Look at the price on this rod. Well, don't let that one get away. We need headlights. We need a car stereo. But some people don't realize they have great things here. Like Daiwa Eliminator spinning reels with auto cast two trigger. Do I know where the deals are? Deals, yes. Fish. <laughs> The Polaroid One Step Flash with the new close up lens. Now under 30 bills. Here you are, Mrs. Lewis. You're all set. Thanks, Bob. I couldn't believe how easy it was to make keys and fix and install locks. And I learned everything in my spare time at home. Let me tell you, the money is good. Boy, am I glad I called the Locksmithing Institute. They sure know how to put you in business. They taught me all about salesmanship, pricing, even how to advertise. They bonded me, sent me tools, an electric key making machine, blanks, locks, spare parts, the works. This diploma made it all possible. It gave me a better way to make this. Make money in locksmithing. Call for your free career guide. No previous experience needed. And you learn at your own pace at home. The Locksmithing Institute. Call 1-800-383-0444. The more you learn, the more you earn. Call 1-800-383-0444. Locksmithing Institute? I couldn't have done it without you. Call 1-800-383-0444. Budweiser Halftime Report is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, old taste, nothing beats a bun. 
halftime at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, where the Orlando Thunder leads the Sacramento Surge in World Bowl II, 17-6. And it's been another interesting and fun-packed year in the World League. And it's worth another look back at some of the big plays and the highlights here on USA. Tire foam from Armor All. One spray, and even old tires look great. Kind of makes you wish we make car foam, doesn't it? New tire foam from Armor All. Just spray, walk away. U.S. Air Reservations, how can I help you? Hi, who are you? To Washington, please. After you. Here you are, sir. Thanks. You're traveling light. Did you have fun flying? Yeah. You enjoy your flight with US now. How are you to Atlanta? Thank you for flying on US Air. You'll hear one word again and again from the people of US Air. What's that for you? For one very good reason. Everything we do. You go to gate 10. Thank you very much. Have you ever wanted to call the play? Well, now's your chance because you're the coach. Play the game. Make the big call. Be the game-winning coach. Call now. You can show the coaches how to do it. Use your best strategy to win the big game. You call the play. Now that's how to call a play. If you know football, call 1-900-773-2255. 269 per minute, adults only. You are here. He has to travel his checks here. Uh-oh. Well, now there's American Express Traveler's Checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Recycling's easy if you got the right stuff and you know what to do. So don't make a mess. Just ask Ace. Ace Harmony trash bags are just $1.97, and Ace Siliconized Acrylic Caulk is 88 cents a tube. Ace Best Buys, another reason Ace is a place for you. The halftime celebration going on here at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Right now, the Orlando Thunder not celebrating yet, but they got a comfortable 17-6 to lead, Boomer. And really, it was the mistake Sacramento made that put Orlando in the driver's seat. Well, defensively, Sacramento, that first series, just killed themselves. And they got uh, Scott Mitchell all the way down inside the 10-yard line. And Scott really shows some moves here for a big man. Makes something out of nothing. Chris Ford with a touchdown, captain, 98-yard drive, but as Boomer said, 35 of those yards by penalties. Here's Eddie Brown's mistake. Well, Eddie Brown needs to know better than this. Anytime a punt comes down inside the 10-yard line, do not field it. Even though he did field it cleanly, Frank was right on the money right there making that tackle. And Eddie Brown needs to know better. Next time that ball comes down inside the 10, just let it hit and don't worry about it. Rick Andrews made the fumble recovery. He'll give us a up-close look from USA's helmet cam of covering that football. And that led to Orlando's touchdown. This time, this was a planned rollout. Scott Mitchell does a nice job of throwing on the run, puts the ball right on the money, right where it has to be. Bowie Davis makes a nice reception, tippy toes right into the end zone. You know, you said something interesting to me about Sacramento. They, if they don't make these mistakes, they're right in the ball game. Well, you know, they feel like they can win this football game regardless. I mean, if they play straight up and don't give Orlando any chances like they did, you know, they got the ball game won. So that's what I expect the second half. Kay Stevenson, I'm sure, is in there 
giving them a tongue lashing about you got to hold on to the football. No stupid penalties. Don't give Orlando any opportunities like you did in the first half, and we'll run away with the football game. Sacramento had a great drive to get their three points at the end of the half, but still they trail right here by 11. At intermission of World Bowl II, it's the Orlando Thunder leading the Sacramento Surge 17 to 6, and we'll have our halftime entertainment when we come back to Montreal in a moment. Fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor for the best shave a man can get. Shark. What you need. Shark. What you need in business today is. Shark. Shark thinking about business. It gives you the world's first desktop. Color facts. Color facts. Shark. Shark and high-resolution VGA notebook computers that fit in your briefcase. Sharp. Sharp thinking. It created the high-performance Master Series copier and our most powerful wizard electronic organizer. Sharp thinking. To be innovative in business, you need... Sharp thinking about business. From coast to coast, Dodge Caravan has happily served more families than any other minivan. But we've made it even better because we've come up with an all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan. So now you not only get a vehicle loaded with safety features, including the first minivan airbag, you've got one that automatically handles just about anything the weatherman can throw at it. No shifting, no levers, no sweat. The all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan, a great way to rediscover American value. Halftime here with over 700 performers on the field. The man getting ready to sing from Starship is Mickey Thomas. Let's go down and have a listen. Entier par ses nombreux succès avec son groupe de Starship, accompagné par la troupe montréalaise New Age Nation. Mesdames et messieurs, accueillons Mickey Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, for tonight's finale, we proudly present a performer whose music with the group The Starship has captured audiences around the world. Accompanied by Montreal's own New Age Nation dance troupe and all of tonight's performers singing his hit song, We Built This City, please welcome Mr. Mickey Thomas. building this city 350 years ago. Montreal, Quebec, the home of World Bowl II, where Orlando leads 17-6 at halftime. Open road, mountain high, morning mist, golden sky, Kawasaki, it's where I want to be. City streets, desert sun, rolling hills, forest run. Kawasaki, it's where I want to be. Yeah! No matter where you want to be, you can get there on a Kawasaki. Kawasaki, let the good times
Thousands of innocent children were caught in the crossfire of violent crime. How much longer will you let this go on? Call this number now. We'll send you information on how you can protect your children from crime in your neighborhood. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. It is an annual right in football to crown their champion as the World League does tonight. But on Tuesday night fights, championships are on the line almost every week. And what better way to make the transition from gridiron to ring than with football hero turned boxer Mark Gastineau. Plus John David Jackson with the defense of his WBO junior middleweight title. And in the weeks to come, Larry Holmes upset win over Ray Mercer. Plus a summer full of knockout action beginning Tuesday night. Halftime Report has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Well, they've got all 700-plus off the field already, and now we await the re-arrival of the Orlando Thunder and the Sacramento Surge. Halftime set to start the third quarter here at Olympic Stadium in Montreal with Boomer Esiason and Michael Barkan. I'm Brad Nestler. Nice to have you along with us here on USA Network for this championship game between the Surge and the Thunder as we take a look at our halftime statistics. And you can see the time of possession with Sacramento's actually, which is a little amazing, but that turnover stat right there and also the penalties that Boomer talked about has been the difference in the ball game. I think time, time of possession is a little bit uh, misleading. You take a look in the NFL, the Buffalo Bills don't seem to have the ball very long, but they do put <laughs> a lot of points on the board. And, Sacramento actually had a couple of real key penalties that gave Orlando an opportunity to put some points on the board on their side. And, and I think Scott Mitchell really played a, a very well, solid first half, completed some big passes, made some nice throws on the run. And uh, I think Orlando is probably hoping that he does a little bit more of the same. Orlando's defense and special teams kind of just uh, served it up to uh, Scott Mitchell and he threw it right off the platter and into the end zone for a couple of touchdowns. Let's check in with Michael Barkan. Mark? Brad, it seems that Scott Mitchell and David Archer are baseball fans, and Expos catcher Gary Carter is a World League fan, so last night before the Expos Cubs doubleheader, Carter watched Mitchell and Archer throw out the uh, opening balls, and then they exchanged a World League football for a baseball bat, and I'm sure right about, this is David Archer's bat that Gary Carter gave, and I'm sure right about now, David Archer would like to use this <laughs> <laughs> on the Orlando Thunder. Back to you. Yeah, Robert Pressberry and Willie Wyatt and Dan Cilio and Carl Dunbar and company. We're still waiting for the teams to come back to play two more quarters. Halftime with the Thunder leading 17-6. been the surge that has been thunderstruck by the Orlando Thunder, the North American East champions. Winners of eight of their last nine and out in front through two quarters here in World Bowl II. Kay Stevenson was talking with us about this matchup and he said, ever since mid-season when his club was three and two, he said, we have had 
to work every week, and we knew we had to put a winning streak together just to get here. And indeed, they went to the tenth and final week of the regular season to win the West over San Antonio and Boomer. They were behind badly at halftime, had to come back and win that one 27-21. So they've been in this situation before. Well, if you think about it, the surge, uh, they're battle hard. Uh, they know what it takes to win, and uh, they've had to climb that mountain again, and they're going to have to do it again tonight. And I think that they're up to it. I, I know that they'll make this uh, a well of a football game come the end of the, the fourth quarter. Houston Oilers represented Bud Adams. Of course, they had one of uh, their players, Reggie Slack, who performed so well in the run and shoot of the New York, New Jersey Knights, and now will settle into the Oilers running camp behind our buddy Warren Moon and Cody Carlson. Dave Archer, MVP offensively in the World League with 23 touchdowns, has yet to throw one tonight. He started off red hot to Eddie Brown, especially his favorite receiver. Well, he finished uh, 11 of 20 for 148 yards and one interception. An interception by Malcolm Frank was returned 39 yards, and Archer made a tackle that saved a touchdown. Joe Bailey, the chief operating officer of the World League. Now, you think about of all the logistical problems that this league has had, you know, you got to take your hat off to, to Joe Bailey and his, uh, his crew of of henchmen that have really pulled this thing off. Two years running and 45,000 people here at the World Bowl in Montreal. I think that's pretty good, uh, pretty good work. As Scott Mitchell warms up, let's check in with the coach of the Thunder, Galen Hall, with Michael Barkin. Coach, you're a half away from a World Bowl victory. What did you tell the team in the locker room at halftime? What do you have to do this half? Well, we, we've got to come out and play harder than we really did the first half. I know they played hard. We got 30 minutes left. Uh, so we win a World Bowl. We just got to play hard. Our offense has to put it in the end zone when we get it down there. All right, good luck. Fred? I think really what Coach Hall is saying is that he realizes that Sacramento gave a few gifts. And he doesn't want to get his team uh, kind of sitting there saying, well, the game's over with. Right. But there's a lot of work yet uh, left to be done on both sides of this football game. Galen Hall is... Uh, been out of Penn State for 25 years. The Nittany Lions 25th reunion's going on this weekend, and he's missing it, of course, to coach in this game. I said, did you call Coach Paterno and say, sorry, I'd like to be there? He says, no, I think he knows I'm busy. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised Coach Paterno's watching his old buddy. The Thunder will have the ball first to start the third quarter. See, Scott Mitchell uh, actually... Picked up right where he left off last week. He was 12 for 22 in the first half for 120 yards and two touchdowns. So nice half for Scott Mitchell. There's the numbers Boomer's talking about. The touchdown throws to Chris Ford and Willie Davis. I didn't realize how big he was. You know, that's still amazed at that. He's huge. <laughs> and he can move. If they didn't have those two linemen that were 6'5 and 6'6 and 300 plus, he'd be the biggest guy out there. <laughs> the crowd says okay halftime was long enough let's do it for two more quarters last year in world bowl one the london monarchs won it over the barcelona dragons in an all-european final and now a north american final between the west and the east here in montreal the surge and the thunder and set to kick off john Deese will tee it up for the surge Gerhardt there wearing USA helmet camp, part of the special team to try to get down and cover Joe Howard Johnson and Brannis Bell. They're back deep for Orlando. And we're underway, second half. Kick will go to Joe Howard Johnson at the goal line. And he got out near the 25 yard line. Carl Parker and Derek Kelson down there on the special team to make the hit. Here comes the big guy, Scott Mitchell. <laughs> Mitchell and his wife Kim expecting their first baby coming up in February. And he's expecting to be the backup quarterback to Dan Marino in Miami. Scott C. Q. will have a few things to say about that. It's going to be a nice battle down there. Sure is. Because he says 16, everybody's reading their wristbands again. Yeah. This should be a pass pattern, probably a hook pattern to one of the outside receivers. Brandis Bell and Joe Howard Johnson, the wideouts, as Mitchell wanted to go to Johnson and threw it. That's grounded! That's grounded! Flag down, and let's see if we've got an intentional grounding. As Proctor leveled Scott Mitchell, and he threw it on the way down. It's got to be. It's got to be grounded. That's grounded. No. 
Proctor, of course, with a late hit earlier that kept a drive alive in the first quarter for Orlando. This time he got all over Mitchell before he had a chance. How about Sacramento coming right out with the blitz? The pass was illegally touched by an offensive lineman. All we have is loss of down, incomplete pass, second down. Wow. This should be, this should be in my estimation, intentional grounding. Intentional grounding is trying to avoid the sack, and that's exactly what that is right there. That, that should be a sack, should go in the book as a sack, and intentional grounding loss it down. So they bring it back to the line of scrimmage where it's second and ten. Three wide receivers to the right side there at the ball, bottom of your screen. Five ball! Bro! Hot, hot! Mitchell from the shotgun. Fires over the head of Willie Davis, his intended receiver. Oh, Sacramento's just come out here with six defensive backs, Boomer, and said, okay, if you're going to throw it, throw it. I, would have, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Coach Hazlitt has really told his defensive line, look, we need more pressure from you. We can't allow Mitchell to sit back there. You can see 13. The defense will be doing 13. The offense will be doing 58. Defense will probably have full man coverage with the man in the middle of the field. And they'll be going against uh, a shallow cross by the, the inside receiver at the bottom of the screen. I don't think Orlando's been in a third and ten situation all night. That's what they've got here. Here comes the receiver underneath. Look out. Mitchell got away from one, got away from two. And loads and goes deep middle, incomplete. Oh, but a nice job by Scott Mitchell. I don't know how he got away from the surge coming after him. He can only smile. It's a punting situation. And that was a nice throw that time by Mitchell as well. You know, I can't say enough about his niftiness back there in the pocket. He's big, he's strong, he's shedding tacklers, and he's making plays. You can see he is the best when he's out of that pocket. Nice job on defense by the surge. As Criswell kicks it away to Eddie Brown. And Eddie just gets out of the way. Slips in. It's going to cost about 15 yards or more to what could have been either a fair catch or a punt return. And instead of having that way up at the 40, it rolls all the way down to the 22-yard line. 52-yard punt with the roll and the surge on offense when we come back. It's the first week of spring training, and a bunch of nice old ladies show up. Say please. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice. Until we started working out. You call that exercising? Hey, Grandma, I don't see you doing it. Mama! <laughs> 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 we finished? In your dreams, homeboy. <laughs> Finally. Cold punch for everybody. Adam, boy. <laughs> You know, you get into fitness, you're likely to get an athlete's foot. And it could get pretty tough. The irritating itch, the painful cracking, the burning. That's when you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. And Tenactin's clinically proven. No wonder it's the antifungal most recommended by pharmacists. Got a tough case of athlete's foot? Get the medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. They're tiny portraits of a people with personalities as varied as our own. They sing of our heroes, echo with our history. There are as many reasons to love stamps as there are people who love them. These are stamps worth saving. Ask for the space stamps at your post office now. Great job by the Sacramento Surge defensive front. Goldberg and company to put some pressure on Mitchell on that opening drive for Orlando. And now the Surge basically has it for uh, as much as they wanted here. 13-18 left third quarter. No harm, no foul on that opening series by the Orlando offense. Sacramento from its own 23. Surge defense did exactly what it needed to do. It needed to gain momentum. Momentum is now on the side of Sacramento. Let's see if David Archer can make Over something happen. Two. Mike Pringle, had some good runs tonight, and this is another one. Boy, he has bounced off some people. Look at that effort. Rodgers comes in, trying to strip the ball away, but all the way out to the 27-yard line goes Pringle. Good run. That is some run. Okay, we got we got purple DeBose coming in. Eddie Wright, 92. Eddie, Eddie Wright. Here we go. Listen up, listen up, listen up. Eddie Wright, 
Eddie Wright meeting Eddie Brown in motion. He's going to start on the left side of the ball, and you'll see him go in motion to the right. As long as David Archer remembers to put him in motion. <laughs> Second and 92 seven. should be a roll to the right. There goes Eddie Brown to the top of your screen, and there, there goes go. Dave Archer on the roll, but they give it back on a little quick opener, and Doug DeBose weaves his way to the 34-yard line. I think he's got the first down. You know, the nice thing that Kay Stevenson does, he, he uses his back's ability to the plays that he's calling. That time was a little draw play, and he feels like DeBose is a little bit niftier in there. They so give the draw play to DeBose, and that's a nice, nice call for him. And you can see all it is is he's faking the sprint to the left and handing underneath to DeBose. Well-designed and well-executed play in a first down, Sacramento. Out to the 34-yard line. With 12 minutes left third quarter, it is 17 to 6, Understand. Orlando. 390, 390, cut. Play action, Archer with time, going deep. Parker has it. To the 38-yard line. Nice thing that time, Carl Parker did a real nice job of shielding Mank Malcolm Frank from the ball. We'll see in the replay how Parker goes up to the ball and puts his body in front of Malcolm Frank. It's a nice job. He's running a little post pattern right here, trying to get inside of him. Frank does a, short, a turn like that. Watch Parker go up and guard himself. Nice job by Carl Parker that time. Nice throw by David Archer, right on the money. As Boomer said earlier, Parker, 42 catches on the regular season. A big one there to give... The surge of first down at the 38 of Orlando. Looks like they're bringing everybody right. after Archer. And David is audible to 54. It's going to be a little quick hitch out here. Got to get rid of it. He got rid of it to Brown, but a nice open field tackle by Glenn Rogers. That's what he's done all year long. But that is a nice job by David Archer that time, reading the defense and audible to a quick hitch pattern to, to Eddie Brown. And if Eddie Brown breaks that tackle, there's nobody in the secondary to clean up the missed tackle for a touchdown. Sixth catch for Eddie Brown, a seven-yard pass play on this one. That's a play where the quarterback knows he's going to get hammered. He's just got to get rid of the ball. And like I said earlier, if you get hit, and you complete the ball, it doesn't hurt quite as much. Rick Andrews, part of the blitz on Dave Archer. That time Mike Pringle had to pick up Rick Andrews. Not one of the most enjoyable things for a running back to do to have to pick up an outside linebacker on a blitz. Second and a long three and another broken tackle by Pringle. And Dave Archer said it all. Good running, baby, for Nick Mike Pringle. Boy, he has bounced off some guys, including Rick Andrews, who finally helped on the stop. Let's go. Let's go waggle left, pull back weak. Split right, waggle left, pull back weak. Waggle left, all that is is that he's going to fake a run to the right, and the quarterback's going to end up on the left side. And he's probably going to try to hit a tight end coming underneath on a shallow cross. So he's going to fake a run, going to the right, the quarterback will set up to the left, and he'll probably hit a crossing pattern underneath. The tight end would be Paul Green from the 24 first down. There's the play fake. Archer waits and waits, and now he's going to scramble with it. Gets what he can, got to the 22, and Willie Wyatt let him have it from behind. A nice job of play calling now by Sacramento, mixing up the run and the pass and the play action. Let's go, uh, let's go split right, play pass red zone next corner. Okay, all this is play pass. They're going to fake a run. Split right. Play pass, red zone, X corner. First sound, first sound. And they're going to probably try to hit Eddie Brown on a corner route down on the bottom of your screen. And what we mean by a corner route, he's going to start inside and then break back to, Four, across three, the face of the, of the defensive back to the outside. Second and eight, Archer <laughs> will run with it. And he's going to get a first down and then some. you got to be shitting me. Got shot there from behind, go. and there's the flag. I think you heard what Dave said, and now he gets hit by Glenn Rogers. And there's another penalty. Another flag, and we might see one of the Orlando defenders spending some time on the sideline. This is exactly what happened to Sacramento in the first part of the game. Now Orlando's losing their cool. He goes for his knees on the on the out-of-bounds side. He should know to leave him alone, and then he hits him in the face on the sideline. A double penalty coming up against Orlando, the kind of thing that hurt Sacramento in the first half. Here's Archer's scramble, and you'll see the hit coming in on the back of the knees as he heads to the sideline by Glenn Rogers. This is reminiscent of Andre Waters of the Eagles against Dave Archer of the Falcons uh, back in the mid-'80s. And here's the second one coming up. Well, the last thing that any defensive player wants to hear is a quarterback jawing at him, so I can't really blame him for that reaction, but... You know, you, you got to keep your cool on defense. You know, defense is, is emotion. Defense is, is toughness. But you've got to keep your wits about you. And right now, Rodgers is not keeping his wits about him. You can see he's a little upset. 
And going to have to go to the sideline for two plays now. An all-world league corner heads to the sidelines, as Boomer said, for a couple of plays. And it is first and goal for the Sacramento Surge with 9.01 to go third quarter. Kevin Gidry's coming in to take Glenn Rogers' spot. Glenn's not right, happy about Z, it. Short yard is Z, King right, pass 16, wide corner on one. Oh, here you go. This is a great call right here. This is a play-action pass, first down and goal. Everybody's going to be real tight. Four, three, seven. And he's probably going to hit Carl Parker in the in the corner right here. But here's the play fake. The throw. Will he get rid of it? I don't know. Archer scrambling around. Now pulls up and lost the ball. And Orlando's got it. Winfred Bryant with a fumble recovery. And maybe that time Dave Archer tried to do a little bit too much. After a great drive by Sacramento, Winford Bryant with a fumble recovery. The big play by the, by the Orlando defense. The one thing that you have to realize when you're down here, the field is constricted. It's smaller. It's more compact. Players are more apt on defense to be all over the place. They're coming. They're, they're defending their goal line. You've got to be careful. The competitive nature of the player wants to make a play. And this time, it actually bit David Archer and caused the fumble. Still 17-6, Orlando, they'll have the ball when we come back. The Brooker boys are here on tour. What's been the highlight of your lake in the stop, Matt? I'd say this new honey barbecue chicken rust. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. Get two pieces with baked beans, coleslaw, and a biscuit in a roundup meal for just $2.99. That was completely unsolicited. Oh, the two-piece honey barbecue roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99 for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. For the finest in women's wear at affordable prices, look to Looking Pretty, the home of beautiful women's clothing. Fine designs for the working woman as well as after five fashions are complemented by a large array of accessories. Looking Pretty is easy at Looking Pretty, Main Street, Catskill. To compete, you've got to be strong. To win, you've got to be smart. Maybe you can be one of us, the few, the proud, the Marines. Anderson windows give you a warmth and beauty you just can't get with aluminum windows. And they keep you more comfortable, too. So you can see how beautiful Anderson windows are, even with your eyes closed. Get the book that's filled with Anderson window and patio door ideas. Anderson windows available at Williams Lumber and Home Centers in Rhinebeck, Salt Point, and Hudson. Undefeated John David Jackson defends his title. Then Mark Gastineau is out to tackle his next opponent. Budweiser presents USA Tuesday Night Fight, Tuesday at 9. Carl Parker on the right stole Dave Archer. Dave, I was there. He just didn't get it to me. The problem is, is that David Archer and Carl Parker can't see this, had Dixon in his face. You could see Parker open here, but Dixon was rushing and was right in David Archer's face, so he didn't have a chance to get rid of the ball. There right. he is. There's the man who made the play right there. He caused the pressure and forced the fumble. Orlando with a three-yard gain on their first down as second and seven with 8-16 in the clock running. And Orlando in front by 11. One, six. Calling hey, 16. Hey, this should be the hook hey, pattern down the field either to Joe Howard or to Chris Ford. Mitchell, there's the hook. And a nice open field tackle by Mc, Robert McWright. Out on Joe Howard Johnson. Let's check in with Michael Barkham. Mike? With David Archer, David, what does a play like that do to you emotionally? Because obviously very tough. You're ready to score. Well, sure it is. You know, I get my guys in a position to score, and then I made a play where the ball got loose and made it. I just want to throw the ball away and didn't feel the pressure coming at me, and, and we got lost the football. That's, that's a bad play by me. You know, I, that's a downer for the team. Now, you know, I got to try to pick them back up again, you know, and, uh, and get us back down the field. I think we can move the ball pretty easily, but we just... Uh, Make some mistake. All right. Thanks, David. Brad? First down hey. toss on third and one to Joe Howard Johnson. So Orlando's moved it out now to their own 33-yard line. Yeah, I think if you're uh, on the offensive side of Sacramento, you know that you can move the football. You're just making big mistakes right now. And 
You know, David's having one of those good good nights, bad nights type of deal. He's making some huge 36. plays, making some great plays, and then unfortunately he's throwing an interception easy, and a fumble. Easy, so easy. he knows Texas, what's going on. Texas! Texas! Audible Texas. by Mitchell. Out of first down. Throws it out. Got it complete. Joe Howard Johnson doing a dance. Got it to the 40-yard line. Boy, he's tough to bring down on the open field. He picked up eight. Well, that's the thing. Mitchell saw the blitz. He threw the ball out to Howard Johnson that time. And really what happens is you, you allow the athleticism of Joe Howard to go out there and make, make a play by making somebody miss a tackle. Galen Hall looking on. Wondering about a safety blitz. We can hear the coaches in the booth talking about it. Scott Mitchell looking at a second down. And a long Max, three coming up. Max, Max! Max, he's telling all his, all his uh, blockers to stay in block, and he wants his receivers to run quick go pattern. And going deep. No! And out of bounds. Well covered by McWright. Joe Howard Johnson made quite a catch, but he was out of bounds. But I'll tell you, the nice thing that's happening right now is that Scott Mitchell is reading blitzes and making audibles and calling proper plays. And that's what you want your quarterback, your field general, to be able to do. Great coverage that time. You know, they've been trying to pick on number 21, McWright, all night long, Boomer. This time he's there stride for Roberts stride. right there. He does the, does the right play. He uses the boundary to his advantage. He pushes the receiver to the sideline. Here's a big play for both clubs. Sacramento trying to stop Orlando on a third down and a long three. Play fake by Mitchell's a beauty, and he's going to try to run for it. No, now he throws. Incomplete. I thought he was going to take off with a stick, and at the last moment, he pulled the trigger. Incomplete, and it's a punting situation for Orlando. <laughs> he was going to take off, but George Bethune was sitting there waiting for him. <laughs> you know, and and uh, I don't care how big you are, when George Bethune is sitting out there, you're not going to run at him. You change your mind in a hurry. Exactly right. There he goes. Sacramento having a tough time getting their punt return team on the field. They almost jumped offside. First well to punt. Eddie Brown calls fair catch. He wants the safe thing this time and takes it at the 26-yard line. That time he knew he had to punt rush on, so he played the right play and made the fair catch. 5-12 to go third quarter. Still Orlando by 11. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants for less irritation. You got the edge. Welcome back to Sega Sports. Hey, we're talking baseball. Sega Genesis Sports Talk Baseball. Sandberg's facing Ryan. Here's the voice of Sports Talk Baseball. 291. High drive. Sierra Beck. What a catch, baby. All the superstars are here, Vic. Canseco, Clark, Dykstra, Franco. Ripkin's up. Back to the game. Ball. Inside. Ball four. Keep on trucking, baby. Ball. Look good to me, Dick. Don't give me your lip, buddy. You're out of here. <laughs> Football is next. Unleash yourself in the mind maze. Free your imagination. Escape your reality. Can you win in the mind maze? It's a perfect place. Drift into another world where everything is what you make it. It's magic. It's the mind maze. The mind maze, where it's all in your imagination. Call 1-900-933-9283. Adults 18 and over only. $5 per minute. It's the steal of a lifetime. You're going to love it. Ben Cross, Kate Nelligan, and Brian Dennehy. Diamond Fleece on USA, June 17th. Brad Nessler, Boomer Esiason, and Michael Barkan at Olympic Stadium in Montreal with 5-12 to go third quarter. They're loving what they're seeing so far tonight, especially if they're Orlando fans. 17-6, Thunder. <laughs> Sacramento from its own 26. End around. Eddie Brown looks like he wants to throw it. And loads and goes deep for Parker. And it's going to be intercepted by Crum. Eddie got it out there, but Todd Crum had it red and covered well. And it goes right back to the Thunder. Well, that's what you just call taking a shot. You think you see something, and sometimes you see it on a different play, and Eddie Brown's not the quarterback, and he's not going to lay it out there 60 yards, but Carl Parker makes a valiant attempt to try to knock the ball out of Crump's hands, but no avail. 
So Crum picks up his sixth interception, four in the regular season, one last week, one tonight, and it goes right back in the hands of the Orlando Thunder offense at the 27-yard line. There's really no reason for that play, Brad, anyway. I mean, they've been moving the ball offensively. And now she's taking a shot, I guess. Mitchell pump takes one way and comes back to Grannis Bell. And a first down at the 46-yard line. Nice pass and a pickup of 19. Junior Robinson covering and made the tackle. I think that they feel that the cornerbacks for the Sacramento Surge are too close to the line of scrimmage. You're trying to get them to back off a little bit. The way you do that is by pump faking. There's the story on turnovers, and that's the story of the ball game, and the reason with four and a half minutes left in the quarter that Orlando's out in front, and they led the World League in turnover ratio, and they're up four tonight. There's a big hit. Nice job defensively by Corey and Freeman, the linebacker. Archer getting retaped, hoping to get back out there as quick as possible. Right now, the surge defense has been on the field for a while, Boomer. One of the reasons being, obviously, is because of the turnover problems that the Sacramento offense has had tonight. You, know, you just wonder just how much this no-huddle offense is actually wearing down the defensive side of the football. You talk to people in the NFL, uh, the Buffalo Bills will tell you one of the reasons that they like to run the no-huddle is because it makes defensive linemen that much more tired as the game wears on. Mitchell on second and 11 from the shotgun. Here comes a blitz, and he throws one up for grabs. Huh. If Tom Gerhardt had just turned around, he'd have had a freebie. That, was, that ball was up in the air for about five seconds. I can't believe <laughs> nobody ran on another ball catch. One thing about Sacramento's defense, they've been extremely effective this second half blitzing. Hey, yellow! 51, 51. Tom Gerhardt, the free safety, you see, wearing USA's helmet cam, and there's the good look from inside his face mask. Had he turned that face what? mask around on the last play, he'd have an interception. Instead, it's Orlando, third down and 11. Probably going to 45. Probably try to hit somebody in the flat. Roll, roll! To beat the blitz. Hot, hot! Mitchell. Fires almost intercepted by Junior Robinson. He had a better shot at that ball than Granis Bell did. And it's three and out for Orlando. Criswell will have to punt it away again. People are probably wondering, did Junior Robinson gamble by going after that football? No, he didn't because he had help behind him. It was a good defensive set to be in, knowing that they were going to try to throw an out pattern. Robinson knows that he has help behind him so he can go after that football. They come after Criswell again. He got away with beautiful punts. Eddie Brown backpedals to the 12. And got to about the 15. Nice coverage by Orlando. And with right to Sears Frank are down there to make the hit. Surge will have it back on offense. They still trail it by 11 here in World Bowl II. River Run, Shimmering Bay, Crystal Lake, Aqua Sea, Kawasaki. It's where I want to be. If where you want to be is where the action is, hop on a Kawasaki watercraft. Either the Jet Ski Sport Cruiser or the Tandem Sport will give you all the excitement that two of you can handle. Kawasaki, let the good times roll. Kawasaki. Introducing Tire Foam from Armorall. One spray, and even old tires look great. Ah. Kind of makes you wish we made car foam, doesn't it? New tire foam from Armor All. Just spray, walk away. This summer in Barcelona, 12 of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, and a common thread. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little more to make a champion. Back at Olympic Stadium, where the Orlando Thunder leads the Sacramento Surge 17 to 6. Sacramento has held Orlando to three punts on three possessions this quarter, but their offense 
making enough mistakes that it hasn't paid off so far. I mean, they've been knocking all night long, Brad. I mean, it's just a matter of time before one of these big plays opens the game up a little bit for the Sacramento offense. Under set. Their big play man is Eddie Brown. He's to the bottom of your screen from the 15-yard line. First down. Mike Pringle has had a good night. Bounced off the first man, but holding on down low with Carl Dunbar and got help from Dean Witkowski, the inside linebacker. You can hear he says sprint left. The quarterback will come out underneath the center, sprint to the wide side of the field to the three receivers. Uh, probably one guy in the flat, one guy running a deep seam pattern right down, the, right down the numbers. Second and seven. Here's Archer's sprint to the left. And there's the throw on the run to Parker. And he got it out to him first down at the 28-yard line. Seems so easy when they're running out of the pocket. He seems to be completing passes, you know, uh, with uh, an easy easier time of it than when he's dropping back. I just keep doing that. Keep mixing up the play action pass. Got plenty of time left. There's no reason to panic at this point. Right, box left, pass 48 switch on one and one. This is a pass 48 switch. What this is, this is going to be a play action pass. We'll see if we can get these safeties pulled up from uh, from the deep secondary and try to throw one over the top of them. From the 29, play action, and Archer goes short across the middle. Tony Burst. Got a first down across the 40 to the 41-yard line. You're going to like the running backs of, uh, of the surge. Uh, Pringle, uh, du Dubose, and Burst all have a little bit of their own little thing that they do. Burst is nice out of the backfield catching the ball. He makes the move. Always makes the first guy miss, it seems like. Here you go. You can see it through helmet cam. Here comes Burst right at you. Makes the first guy, <laughs> makes uh, Andrews miss. They're going to go out. They're going to take people on. Pringle needs uh, two or three guys to take him down. And Dubose is their nickel back, and he comes in and it makes some big plays as well. So nice, nice backfield there for the, for the surge. Come on now, Dunbar, come on, come on. Collars, come on now. Pringle as he heads into the line. Come on. And the third quarter winding down. As we approach 30 seconds remaining in the third stanza. And it's still 17-6, the same as our halftime score. Here we go, split right, 34 right. 14 pullback spot, first down, first down. Just outside the 43-yard line. Second down and seven. This will be twin hook Two. patterns on the outside and a little tight end in the flat. Archer tight end. got it out to the tight end, trying to break away from Todd Crumble. Won't let him go. He got out of bounds, though. Eight seconds, seven seconds left in the quarter. Todd Crumble, who had the interception on the last defensive series for Orlando, drags the tight end out of bounds. They can't do that. That's they actually don't even gain it. any yards. Good job by Crum that time, hanging on to the tight end. Well, the third quarter is going to wind down. Dave Archer will have a chance to talk to Kay Stevenson, and he knows he's only got 15 minutes to make up 11 points. The end of three. Still the thunder of Orlando out in front of the Sacramento Surge. It began as a grand vision, expanding America's favorite sport into new cities, in new countries, creating a new type of spring entertainment spectacle, daring a new breed of player to greatness, showcasing an intensity of play fueled by passion for the game, offering a sports experience with color, sound, and non-stop action. For new fans, proudly displaying their team colors and cheering their favorite stars. The grand vision is now reality, as players in five countries take the field every week in a 10-team dash for the World Bowl trophy. America's favorite sport has boldly moved forward, reaching out to more fans in more places than ever before. The World League, expanding the future of pro football.
back at Olympic Stadium with Eagles President Harry Gamble, and you've got number 18, David Archer, for the surge. He's your property, and I know you got seven quarterbacks in camp. Where does he fit in? Well, he's going to come in and compete. I think he's a good football player, and I'd like to see him come in and compete and let the cream come to the top. Perhaps the trade might be in the offing, though, if he can't fit in? Well, I think ultimately down the road, once we begin camp, that uh, there's any possibility of that. But I think we want to see these guys, and we'd like to see them compete against each other. It's going to be tough, though. Seven quarterbacks in camp. Thanks, Harry. Fred? All right. Randall Cunningham, of course, the number one. Jim McMahon, number two. Brad Gable's in there. Casey Weldon's in there. And we've got somebody making an idiot of themselves out on the field. And one of the best tackles of the night by one of our security <laughs> people at the 38-yard line has uh, stopped those antics. We've got 15 minutes left to World Bowl II, and it is 17 to 6. And that man who we just talked about, David Archer, trying to pick up five yards on third down here to keep his surge drive going. Dave Archer certainly earned himself another look here we go. in the NFL. Fred left, row 608 HN on one on one. Ready? 608 HN. All that is a little hook pattern to the outside receivers. Over six. A crossing pattern by the inside receiver. 390. 390. Cut. 35. Archer. The pressure got it complete. There's the crossing pattern and a first down for Mark Stock and then some. Oh! Ball loose. Did they blow it dead? I believe they did at the 31 yard line. I'll tell you what, I like the way Mike uh, Mark Stock got that ball in stride. David Archer delivered it right on the money. I mean, he took that ball and he went north and south. He went straight up the field, didn't look for the sideline, was looking for extra yards. Come on now, come on. Yeah, that's a heck of a run. There's Stock on that crossing pattern. Now watch how he turns it up and he lowers his shoulders. Most receivers don't do this. That's a nice run by him. He's and down, he's down. He down, ball loose. Still Sacramento now with a first down at the 31 of Orlando. Fourth three set. 390, hot. Archer play action, goes right back to the man. He faked it to Pringle, and he got it to the 25, and then really got level. Really like what David Archer's doing now. He's just being real patient. He's not trying to go for the big home run. He's just taking his open receivers, taking five, six, seven yards at a time, and moving his team down methodically. Now let's see this time if they don't make the key mistake in this part of the field. At the 25, second and four. Archer seven of seven in the second half. Four three set. Three sixty. Three sixty. He's got three wide outs. <laughs> and he's going to Eddie Brown got tackled by Malcolm Frank. I mean flat just took him down at the ten. Flags down. It seemed like there was also a little confusion around the offensive line. I think the defense might have thought that the offense moved and the play should have been stopped. The coaches will tell you, do not stop your pursuit on defense until you hear the whistle. And I think this time maybe Orlando might have thought that there would have been or should have been a penalty on Sacramento, but that wasn't called. Number 20 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. 15 yard penalties. Malcolm Frank trying to stay with number 88, Eddie Brown. Okay, that's not a bad play by Malcolm Frank because he knows that he's end up going to get beat. And, and in this league, a pass interference does not take you down to the goal line. 15-yard walk-off puts it just outside the 12. So if he doesn't knock him down, it's a touchdown. So not a bad play all in all by Malcolm Frank. Well, here's the best opportunity the surge has had since Dave Archer fumbled earlier in the third quarter. They're down outside the 12-yard line of the Thunder. <laughs> They give it to Pringle, and he got only about a yard. Nice job by Carl Dunbar defensively. This is the part of the field that coaches call the red zone. When you get inside the opponent's 25-yard line, this is where defenses change. This is where offenses change. Okay, let's go. Cincy left, sprint left, cross, wide corner. Defenses change. A little, a little more de uh, man coverage down here. A little bit more blitzing. Defenses uh, feel like they have to make a play. They got to try to force. A, a penalty. Now, what the play call here is, Four, three, is David is going to roll to his left and he's going to try to hit the inside receiver in the back of the end zone. Three, Second down the blitz. Nine. So it's a good call. There's the roll. Archer to the end zone. Touchdown! Yeah! Way to go, Paul. Good job, baby. Paul Green 
the tight end. That's a terrific play call by Kay Stevenson because he knows that that defense has got to gamble. they got to make something happen. And what do you want to do when they're blitzing? You want to roll your quarterback out to get him away from the blitz. And that's exactly the play that they have called. You can see David Archer rolling to his left, buying time as you see Andrews blitzing all the way from the other side. Can't get to him. He lost a nice pass to his tight end green in the back of the end zone. And the surge will play for two here to try to make it a field goal game. They trail by five. An extra point doesn't do them a lot of good. Two points would be gigantic. We'll see how they do. Four wide receivers for Archer. Looks left. Goes to the middle and got his man. One happy QB, I'll tell you that. Archer, the league's MVP, starting to show why in the second half. Don't go away. We got 12:27 to play, and only a field goal separates the Thunder and the Surge. I smoke, but on this flight, cigarettes are grounded. My answer: Wrigley Spearmint Gum. That cool, clean taste never lets me down. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. Oh. Goodbye. O is together. O is capturing our own history. O is the new Olympus Infinity Super Zoom 3000, the world's smallest, lightest, weatherproof zoom camera. It allows you to get close to some of life's most precious O's, like welcome home. When you need to know what's going on in the sporting world, there's only one number you need to call. 1-900-370-3322. Jim Feist Sports Extra at 75 cents per minute. Jim Feist Sports Extra provides you with the fastest and most complete scoring updates in the country, all in the official Nevada rotation. You're able to access the latest Vegas line, weather conditions, injuries, and much, much more. Call 1-900-370-3322. I smoke, but where I work, it's not allowed. No problem. I've got Wrigley Spearmint Gum. That cool, clean taste always works for me. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. An 85-yard touchdown drive, engineered by David Archer, has the Sacramento Surge back within a field goal with 12-27 left to play in World Bowl II at 17-14. And needs to kick off. And it's Scott Mitchell's turn. Joe Howard Johnson from the goal line. And watch out for this guy in the open field. Got it out to the 24. That's where Scott Mitchell will take his turn. But right now, let's check in with the surge quarterback and Michael Barkin. With David Archer, and I said you were look like you're going to run it in on a two-pointer, but you said... No, I'm just waiting for Paul to clear. He had a backer single line. They tried to blitz us. We were in the perfect play. We topped everybody down and sprinted outside. And and we had him open earlier in the game this time. I got a shot to get him the ball. We just take care of the ball, man. We've been moving it all day game long. Just got to take care of it. Is the emotional flow different now in terms of famine to feast, so to speak? Well, I think, you know, obviously three points is different than being down 10 points or 11 points. But, uh, hey, it's still anybody. It was like anybody's ball game at halftime. It's anybody's game now. We're going to come. We're going to try to go get it. All right, David Archer, Fred. Well, we'll see if they can get it. Right now, Orlando still holds the upper hand by three. Panasonic presents a new breed of smooth operator. The new smooth operator rechargeable razor unites the old-fashioned closeness of a warm, wet shave with the convenience and no-nick comfort of an electric. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. Smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you'd. me you have to be good looking popular reasonable <laughs> smart <laughs> loaded and know a good thing when you see it so if you really want to impress me you just have to be <laughs> a cute little escort go out in style for $168 a 
month at your local Ford dealer. At Prada's Home Decorating Center, you'll find the largest selection of Del Mar custom window treatments in Columbia and Greene County. If your decorating needs call for micro or mini blinds, duet shades, vertical blinds, or pleated shades, Prada's has them all at 60% off. As always, free estimates, guaranteed installation, and expert sales assistance. That's 60% off on all Del Mar custom window treatments, only at Prada's Home Decorating Center, 751 Warren Street, Hudson, or call 828-1613. Thought you'd subpoena famous to be there. Uh, secret passion with Robert Clayton on USA tomorrow night. The man that scored the touchdown, Paul Green, tight end out of USC, Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> and now Orlando, for the first time since early in the ball game, is going to have to show its stuff. Their lead's been cut to three from the 23. Mitchell incomplete. One hopped it, intended for Granis Bell. Done, done. So since the beginning of this first, uh, second half, the Sacramento defense has totally controlled the momentum and has changed the whole complexion of this football game. Orlando has only two first downs this half. Scott Mitchell's only four for ten in this half, and he's got to be able to fight the blitz. And thus the yardage differential you see. Let's see if the blitz is coming here on second and ten. They back out of it. Mitchell fires near side, got his man at the 30-yard line. Nice job to bring down Chris Ford by McWright and Tracy Perkins. Big play right here, third and two. Six! 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 And what they're going to do is they're just going to throw quick Six. little hitch patterns outside. The third down and two coming up for the Thunder. Either one of the wide receivers outside, he'll throw it to in a quick hitch pattern. He's going to have to get rid of it because here's a blitz. Mitchell dropped the ball, and the surge has covered it. Corey and Freeman with a fumble recovery, and Orlando makes its first mistake of the night. You just look down on the football field right here. And you can see the momentum change. Seems like the Orlando players now can't get out of their own way as where Sacramento is picking up where they've left off sort of that first and second half. Lewis Riddick got a hand on the ball. Nate Hill covered it. And that same snake that was biting Sacramento the entire first half just slithered in Orlando's direction. And now the surge trailing by three sets up shot in Thunder territory. Toss sweep to Pringle who puts his head down and got down to the 23-yard line. Nice collision there. Yeah, I like the way Pringle runs with that football. I mean, for a little guy, he really runs hard. He's only 5'8", 100, 186 uh, pounds. Yeah, he was going until. We had both guys open. All right, let's go uh, Cincy, right, 30 man. Jay Stevenson makes the call. There's a guy that helped get the football back for the surge offense. 30 man. My, in my terminology, this seven should be a run up the middle. Go, Let's see what happens. Or he might throw a little hitch out to Eddie Brown. Let's see what happens. Here. Second and four. There it is. Right There's the run by Burst, who got to the 21. That's it. Robert Pressbury. A nice stop defensively for the Thunder. And now here comes a, a big third down situation at about two to go. What? We need two. Two, two, two. No, we need more than that. No, it's only about two, Coach. Let's go. <laughs> We'll call it a long two. And he's going to, obviously, you, you at home can understand the quarterback is going to run and sprint to the left. And he'll probably try to hit either the tight end or the or the back in the flat. Remember, Archer, here it comes. Archer has pretty good wheels of his own. He's going to have to use them. Archer is drilled, but got rid of the ball. And that could be called, uh, considered uh, intentional grounding as well. But, you know, he did the smart thing by getting rid of the football keeping his team in field goal range to tie this ball game up. Yeah, we had a nickel blitz red dog. Yeah, we shut up. Yeah. Rick Andrews, part of that pressure from USA's helmet cam. You see him coming after Dave Archer. Ouch. And now the hero from a week ago, Kerry Blanchard, 
who joined Sacramento in week seven, hit a 46-yard game winner with just under four minutes to play last week over Barcelona. He's going to try one from 38 yards to try to tie the ball game up. Blanchard's kick is going to go wide left. Just flash missed it. Orlando quarter break there, Brad. Big play on third down, coming with the blitz and, and forcing David Archer to throw the ball away. 9.03 left. It's still Orlando by a missed Sacramento field goal. This is where it happened. The breakthrough in urethane chemistry that created a car polish so technologically advanced one application lasts an entire year. Finish 2001. The car polish you use only once every 12 months. This old car's been badly neglected. Its finish appears destroyed. With no rubbing, no buffing, Finish 2001 with its urethane formula safely brings back the showroom shine. A rich, deep gloss shine that lasts an entire year. We tested Finish 2001 against other leading polishes. Even some that claim to protect your car against fire or against acid. And the test results? Nothing but nothing protects or shines better than Finish 2001. The 12 month car polish with a 100% money back guarantee. Finish 2001 is available at these fine stores. I could spend all day here. Wouldn't leave much time to fish. Don't you have enough lures? You can never have enough lures. Look at the price on this rod. Well, don't let that one get away. We need headlights. We need a car stereo. Well, some people don't realize they have great things here. Like Daiwa Eliminator spinning reels with auto cast two trigger. Do I know where the deals are? Deals, yes. Fish, no. He's drying. An all-new season on USA, tomorrow night at 10. Boomer Kerry Blanchard's got to tell himself, forget it, maybe I'll get another shot. He's going to get a couple more shots. He's just got to relax, put it out of his mind, and come back and kick uh, either the, the tire or the winner. Looks on Mitchell as he hands it off to Clack, and Clack in the open field. All the way to the 39-yard line. Tom Gerhardt may have saved the touchdown. Darrell Black rips it off for 18 yards. Okay, that's a big play because that relieves a little of the pressure that the offense of Orlando has been feeling this the past uh, the past uh, couple series here. Here's Helmet Cam running after Clack. And catching up to him. Coming up near the end of the game tonight, we'll present tonight's Edge Helmet Cam play of the game. Orlando first down from its own. 39-yard line with a three-point lead. Nice play fake. Mitchell in trouble. Out in the flat overshot Joe Howard Johnson. And George Bethune got the pressure on Mitchell and caused the Aaron throw. Scott's in a little bit of funk right now. You know, he had a real nice first half solid. Last couple of series, he's been, uh, he's had a fumble. He's had a couple four throws. You can see right here the pressure by Bethune. And Mitchell's got to be able to complete that ball. Second down at 10. Mitchell sets up and got hit as he threw, and it's picked off by Michael Jones. Another Orlando turnover and another chance for Sacramento. Mitchell, it seems like there's 22 defensive players on the field. It seems like every time he looks somewhere, there's a defender in his way. I, I've been in this situation myself where all of a sudden it just seems like people are everywhere. As we're in the first half, everybody was wide open. Now all of a sudden the Sacramento defense has started to play the game that they know how to play. You can see these guys, this is what Johnson does when he scores touchdowns. He jumps around. So these guys are actually having their fun with Joe Howard. At the 34-yard line of Orlando, Sacramento first down, trailing by three. Archer throws short to Pringle. Pringle inside the 20. Mike Pringle, what a run! 
First and goal. 42 yards later. Boomer, this kid's done it all night, bouncing off people. Okay, he does not want to be denied. I, this is the kind of kid that you want in your backfield. You can see, Martin just steps up in the pocket real nice, dumps it off, and watch his... Watch Pringle run and watch him put his shoulders down. He's not going to go down by one guy, I'm telling you. Look at that. He is delivering the blow, and he's not taking it. The surge has not led tonight. They trail by three, but Six, they've six, got five, it seven. at the Orlando three. First and goal. 390. 390. Parker in motion. Toss to Pringle. Can he do it? Not quite. To the one-yard line. Rick Andrews saved a touchdown. You're on the Orlando sideline right here. Say, what is happening? All right, close. 14 lead. 14 lead. This is going to be an isolation right over the right guard, right tackle gap out of the I formation. This is where you tell your lineman just. 14 right. 14 lead. This is where you want your offensive lineman to get below the defensive lineman, and this is where you want your linebackers to dive over to try to stop the penetration by the running back. Let's see if Pringle follows Tony Burge over the top. Up, oh, no, lost yardage. Great job by the Orlando defense. Rick Andrews. This is where it gets really nasty down in here, boy. I'll tell you, defense is coming from everywhere. 11 guys all up around the line of scrimmage. Watch Andrews just fill the hole. That's some kind of tackle right there. Take a look at helmet cam right here. Wow. Now that is the way you stick the running back in the hole, Brad. Rick Andrews, the leader of the Lime Slime. <laughs> now let me just tell you, so he's got a smile on his face, but he's got a headache. <laughs> Sacramento wants to talk about it. They don't want to blow an opportunity at the Orlando two-yard line. Timeout surge. Five minutes, 48 seconds to play in World Bowl II. Orlando still leads, but Sacramento's close. The legendary Train Climatuff compressor, stout heart of train air conditioners. In a test like this, engineers have been pushing a train compressor to its limits, trying to make it fail. They've been trying and trying for over 20 years. Designed, tested, and manufactured to last. It's hard to stop a train. Twelve of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, and a common thread. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little more to make a champion. Introducing the hottest two-seater watercrafts on the water, the Kawasaki Jet Ski Supersport. With a sleek V-hull and a powerful 750 engine, the Supersport is where you want to be. Kawasaki, that's good time go. Kawasaki. Brad Nessler, Boomer Esiason, and Michael Barkan at Olympic Stadium in Montreal with 44,000 looking on to see if Dave Archer can get the surge in the end zone and get a lead. And we, and we know what the play they're going to run. Quick, 121 fade on one, on one. The thing that they got to guard against is against the blitz up the middle because if somebody comes in quick, there could be a fumble exchange between center and quarterback. Third and goal at the two. They're going to throw it up wide outside. Here it is. Eddie Brown to the end zone. Touchdown! That was some kind of throw, boy. I'll tell you, he put that ball right on the money. And the nice thing about that, his landmark was to shoot the ball right over the defensive back head. That's exactly what he did. He threw it right over number 26, Brent Rogers' head. And he couldn't have put the ball any better. Here's, here's the roommates, Archer to Brown. 
Watch how he throws the ball right over the head of the defensive back so he can't find it. And the nice thing about that is look how Eddie Brown sets up the sets up the play. It gives him a nice a nice target to throw to. And they did it against an all-world league corner, Glenn Rogers. Gary Blanchard in for the point after. And now it's the surge by three. Trying to make it four, and they've got it. What a second half for the Sacramento Surge. Champions of the North American West. And they've surged to the front with 5.44 left. Okay, well, they can't start the celebrating now. they got five minutes to go. Scott Mitchell has proved that he can get it done. guys kick back on the weekend. Jack, on the other hand. So, how do you feel? Great rock and roll. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Tomorrow, we're sleeping in. is not what you want in a shave. Now, you've got the edge. This is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. Edge, proud sponsor of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. Need a pick off Michael Jones on the left with the interception that gave it to number 18, Dave Archer. And he got his team in the end zone, and the surge of Sacramento leads for the first time tonight. 21 to 17 with 5.44 left. Still a long time, a lot of time for Orlando. Joe Howard Johnson. Oh boy, did he get tagged at the 15 yard line by Randy Thornton on special teams. Okay, this looks like two different football games. Not in the first half, all, all Orlando. Special teams, offense, defense, mistakes by Sacramento. Second half, Sacramento comes out of the locker room. Defense shuts down Orlando's offense right out of the get go. And Orlando has not been able to establish anything on offense since the second quarter. Yeah. That last drive after the Jones interception went 34 yards in four plays, a little hey, over Trump, two minutes. Trump. 18 straight points roll, for roll, Sacramento. H. Now the key for H. Scott Mitchell is just to relax and just do what he does best. Cut, Take cut. the short pattern, pattern and just march the team right down the field. Oh, boy. The ball is loose again. And let's see. Whistles blow it dead. They're going to stay down at the 15. And David Westbrook and Nate Hill made a Scott Mitchell sandwich at the 15-yard line, the line of scrimmage. He needs a completion real bad right now, just for his confidence, just to get him back in rhythm again right now. You know, he's, he's, he's taking some shots. That looked like a fumble. And he's trying to do a lot of things. You know, I, I, could, I could feel for him, but he's just got to get a, he's got to get a completion. He's got to get some yards right here. Four wide receivers for Scott Mitchell from the shotgun. Sets and fires and almost picked off by Tracy Perkins. Pass intended for Willie Davis. It's third and ten. Let's check in with Michael Barkin. With David Archer, how have you turned this thing around so quickly? With that group that's on the field right now, it's number two defense in the league, and they're just creating havoc in there. They turned the ball over a couple times, and we cashed in on the last one. One of the, one of the strongest comebacks you've had as a pro? It's been a fun one, yeah. It's been one of the better ones. we got to keep in there, though, because this guy can beat you at any time. All right, David, good luck. Brad? Well said, Dave Archer. Couldn't have said it any better myself. Roll, roll. He's right. The defense deserves a lot of credit for the, for the resurge of the surge. How's that? From the gun. Let's see if they bring the blitz. Here they come at Mitchell. And the ball is loose. Riddick knocked it loose again. Covered at the five-yard line by Doug Aronson. Lewis Riddick, who was penalized in the first quarter, a costly one, has really come to play in the second half. Wow. This is some pass rush that Scott Mitchell is facing. He knows it's a blitz. He knows he's got to get rid of it. And he doesn't want to throw the ball now away down here. Riddick does a nice job of coming down there and going after the football. The return on as Criswell set to punt. Spiral line drive. Eddie Brown will just let it go. It's going to end up being a nice kick for Criswell as it rolls all the way down 
to the 42-yard line, a 54-yard kick. Lewis Riddick, who played such great football at Pittsburgh, a big fella. The 49ers drafted because they thought he reminded them a little bit of Ronnie Lott. Boy, Scott Mitchell's seen a lot of number 42 in this half. I'll tell you, Scott Mitchell has taken some lumps. First, it was Chris Ford on a 10-yard reception from Mitchell to put Orlando in front by seven. Sacramento countered with Blanchard's field goal to make it 7-3, but the Thunder came right back following a turnover and scored again and then added a Tracy Bennett field goal to lead 17-3. A nice drive by Sacramento just before intermission to get a field goal to go to the break down by 11. But in the second half, it's all Sacramento. Paul Green, 12 yards from Dave Archer, and a two-point conversion was good as well. And then Sacramento took the lead on Eddie Brown's two-yard Toss from Dave Archer, and Archer at the controls again, and now they'll try to keep it on the ground. Doug DuBose to midfield, a pickup of eight. Good job, good job, good it's important job. now for David Archer, and I'm sure he knows this, is to use 40 seconds every time he gets up there behind center. Just take your time. Your, your offense is moving the football. You get eight yards on the first, you get eight yards the, on first down, now you're second and two. You can all, almost do anything you want. See the play clock is at 19, 18. Let's see if you okay, can take it down right. under four seconds. 15 week. Hold on, hold on. All right, 15 week. First sound, first sound, ready? Doing a nice job of keeping them in the huddle, keeping them relaxed, keeping them poised. Hey, get over here. Second down two. and almost three. Snapped it with two seconds to go on the clock. Pringle, first down. Penalty marker down near the end of the run. And another, another one down back near the line of scrimmage. Those we'll things they're going to be holding or, or impossible facing. We're probably going to be holding. The last thing that you want right now is a penalty. And Orlando knows it's against Sacramento. And you know what? It almost looked like it happened after the fact, unless it was just a late flag, because Pringle was well past that first down marker before that flag ever came down on the turf here at Olympic Stadium. Holding, number 88, offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. That's the case, it was downfield. Not only do you lose your first down, but you also lose seconds off the clock. The 40-second clock now is reset to 25. The clock will not be restarted until the snap of the football. Look at Dave Archer's right. second half. 92, one on one, ready? That's why he won the offensive MVP award in this league this season with numbers like that. I like this now. He's going to drop back and throw a pass. It's come on, come on, it's aggressive offense. Second and eight. Parker in motion. They give it off to DuBose. And another flag now. He may have another holding call. <laughs> you heard Dave Archer say, now what? I think we know. Byron Forsyth, the center, might be the guilty party this time. You know, we saw David Archer's stats for the first and second half. Well, the one thing Damn that you it. did not see in there. Holding number 54, offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. It was the tackle that he made inside the 10-yard line after he threw the interception that held Orlando to three points as right. opposed to seven. Good point. Take a look at the center actually tackling Cilio. And now, instead of a first down in Orlando territory, which was the case two penalties ago, it is second down and 18 way back at the 34. Going to probably try to hit Eddie Brown in an out pattern down here at the bottom. And that gets a little risky. Here comes the blitz. Archer fires on the run, incomplete. That time he actually had Brown on an out route, but he knew the blitz was coming, so what he had to do is he had to get rid of the ball quickly. Third down at 18. Scott Mitchell waiting for another chance on Orlando's sideline, and Dave Archer hoping he can come up with a third and 18 here. Still plenty of time left for the Thunder. 2.50 to go. They trail by four. All right, here we go. Here we go. Gun, Eddie Wright, Rose, 866, X cross on one and one. Ready? Hit they're that They're going to try to hit Eddie Brown coming underneath Couple. after he goes in motion. This is the play that they hit him on right before the end of the first half when he had the big play down the sideline. Brown in motion from that shot. There he comes. There he is. But a great open field tackle by Ephraim Thomas. Drops Eddie Brown in his Timeout. Track. Orlando has to call timeout here. Clock still running. 238, 237. All right, they call timeout. With 234 left. 
Can't fuck yourselves, man. God damn. 21 17 in the fourth quarter. Sacramento oh, leading third World third Bowl third. two as they had to battle back from a 17 to 6 halftime deficit. And now Orlando's going to get another chance. A punting situation coming up. And John Neese will punt. And the man back deep, Joe Howard Johnson's got two punt return touchdowns to his credit this season. Keep that in mind. A 90 yarder in the regular season. And last week, he took one on the fly and went 60 yards as fast as you can bat an eye. So watch out when you punt to that guy. Hey, that Sacramento offensive situation there was just something that, you know, leads me to believe that this game is not over yet. So, uh, this is uh, going to give Scott Mitchell that another chance and, and make it up for, you know, a poor second half by, by the offensive unit. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not always the quarterback to blame. I mean, you know, he's facing blitzes. Seems like when he's been thrown at guys, they've been covered. You know, there's a lot of things to go around, but being a quarterback, part of it is, is understanding that you're the guy that everybody's going to point at. I think you sure know that pretty well. Well, yeah, sure, we all know that. That's just part of the position. That's why, you know, it's, it's one of the most difficult positions in all of sports to play because you've got to deal with all of that. But, you know, Scott's a tough competitor. He's going to come out here, and he's going to try to start making some plays. Here's a key punt coming up, and the reason being, you better cover Joe Howard Johnson. Nice punt. Joe Howard Johnson with a fair catch at the last second, takes it right at the 20-yard line. Orlando's 80 yards away, and they're down by four. And here comes Big Scott Mitchell, who had a brilliant first half, but as Wilbur said, has been getting rattled a little bit here in the second half, and his club needs a touchdown. You no, know, he actually made a couple nice calls earlier in the second half versus the blitz and just missed a few of them. If he would have hit a few of those, I'll tell you, he would have gained some real confidence. Right over Max 83. Max 83. Right? Max 83, what Max means. Max. Max means is that they're going to protect for the blitz. Right. And they're only going to send three receivers out there. This position, Sacramento probably will not be blitzing. And they're not. Mitchell fires to Granis Bell. I don't think he picked that up. That was a one hopper. It'll be second down to 10. The Sacramento's defense actually has Orlando's offense so confused that they, they're not sure when they're blitzing. And right now they're calling protection to protect against the, protect against the blitz. And Sacramento did not blitz on that first first down. Max, we'll see now Max. if they're going to come now the blitz. And here they have the max protection on again to protect Put against on. it. Scott Mitchell. Hey, Almost hey, picked off blitz. again. Blitz Tracy blitz Perkins blitz. was close. And Sacramento surge, the number one defensive team against the pass during the regular World League season, starting to show why right now. Well, well, I'll tell you, Nate Hill was 38, in the backfield again. 84. So, right. 49, 49, 49, 49. You heard the offensive coaches the tell Galen Hall, we need 10, Galen, and they do on third down. It's been a tale of two halves for these quarterbacks. Yeah, just clear. We're going to try to hit somebody across the middle of the field. Get up there, Chelsea. Get up there. If he gets the time, they back out of the blitz this time, and Mitchell does have time. And he got it to Joe Howard Johnson, who lost the ball. And I think Titley got on top of it. Or is it Granis Bell? At any rate, it's Orlando. Let's see when they unpile. It's Mike Titley, the tight end. That's the first time he's touched the ball all night, and it couldn't have come at a better time for Orlando. Let me tell you something. Third and ten, two, two minutes and ten seconds ago, and you're in the World Bowl, and you complete a pass like that. That shows you something. He's fighting against animosity right now. And he's completing the pass, the biggest pass of the game thus far. And he's got time to talk it over on the sidelines because we've come to the two-minute warning. All Orlando in the first half. All Sacramento in the second half. But now it's a four-point game with two minutes left. We'll be back for the finish of this one in a moment. Why don't Olympic divers do cannonballs? 
Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brew. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. When it comes to refreshment, Aww. who is Rob? It's a perfect 10. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge. This is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. Edge, proud sponsor of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. Time now for the Edge Helmet Camp Play of the Game, brought to you by Edge Shaving Gel. For less irritation, you got the edge. And it was on special teams. Eddie Brown hit by Malcolm Frank on the special team coverage. And Rick Andrews wearing our USA Helmet Cam is all over this one with a fumble recovery. That led to an Orlando touchdown. And now they're looking for one more touchdown. If they can get it, they can maybe win it. But they trail by four with two minutes left. And Scott Mitchell's on last two. completion was a big-time completion. That's on the right. On two. You know, and he's keeping his poise in a huddle. That's important right now. He also needs to know that he does have two, he's in a two-minute offense, which is no problem for Orlando. Two timeouts left to go. Plenty of time. If you're Sacramento, do you blitz? Good question. There's the timeouts left. <laughs> Each with two. I do. Two. I blitz because they haven't handled it yet. The Lewis, thing about the blitz, though, you, you leave yourself open for a big play. Lewis Riddick sneaking up there close, but he doesn't come. Mitchell goes down. And the ball is loose. Let's see. Is it Sacramento ball? Sinclair has it. And it is Sacramento ball. That with a defensive line like that, you don't have to blitz. Sinclair, who led the World League in sacks, and a lot of people think is going to be a starting defensive end for the Seattle Seahawks, just came up with one defensive gem for the Sacramento Surge. What did we say one of the big matchups was going to be earlier in the night? And it turned out to be one of the biggest plays in the evening. And that's yep. the fact that Cunningham, the big offensive tackle for Orlando, is not in the, play, in, in the game. And there's how you feel as a defensive coordinator. When your team gets the ball back. Now less than two minutes to go. A couple of first downs and the Sacramento Surge could win the World Bowl. Mike Pringle. Oh, what a tough run. Pringle's got a first down. Great job. Great job. Way to come off the ball. Dave Archer. Leading the Sacramento resurgence in the second half. And Scott Mitchell can only look on and wonder. Good job. Time out, Orlando. Scott They're Mitchell down to one. It. Scott Mitchell had a terrific year for the Orlando Thunder, and I'll tell you, there's nothing to hang his head about. Hey, nope. He's going to have a lot of great seasons ahead of him in the NFL. He's going to be a talented young quarterback. It's, you know, we all have days like this where, you know, you, you play one great half and you have a little trouble in the second half. It's just a part of playing the game. And then all quarterbacks, whether it be Dan Marino or whether it be Scott Mitchell, you know, are going are gonna to experience the pain of this football game quite like this, and that's what makes this game so special. Still 148 left, but Orlando down to one timeout and trailing by four. Mike Pringle with a big, big first down run, got it to the 21-yard line. Dave Archer brings up the surge offense. First down. Over hey, I'm make them wide. Three All the Thunder turnovers have come in this all-important fourth quarter. Hunt. Here's a give to Pringle again. And again, Pringle gets three. Yeah. Great job, oh! Great job, great job! What a run by Mike Pringle. And a timeout, Orlando, their final. Kay Stevenson knows his team's on the verge of a championship as Orlando's out of timeout. Timeout. Dave Archer will come to the sideline, limp to the sideline. I, I talked to him yesterday and I said, Dave, 
where does this one rank as far as your games and not only your NFL career, but whatever else you might have done as far as a player? And he said, you know, it's all relative. He said, you know, we hadn't beaten Marsh Valley High School in Idaho in 10 years, and Soda Springs finally did it. And then he said, my first start for Iowa State was at Neyland Stadium in front of 95,000. My first start for the Atlanta Falcons was in the Kingdome, and that was sold out. And then he said, we beat Dallas one time with the Falcons back in 1986, and that had never happened before in Texas. He says, this one fits in the top five someplace. And I think this is going to be the head of his list. About a minute and 39 seconds from now. These guys went to work back in uh, back in February. And it doesn't matter whether you're in the NFL, the World League, or whatever it is. You're still striving to, to achieve something, a championship of this level. You know, it's so satisfying when you get to this point. And then on the other side, for Orlando, you know, it hurts so much. But, you know, that's what football is all about. The emotion swings, and, you know, there'll, there'll be another day for all these football Four, players. Three, 390. 390. Cut. Second down a yard. A first down to lice it. And Pringle's got it. And he's got a touchdown. Let's see. Do we have a holding penalty? They are going to bring it back, I think. Penalty marker down. Here's the call. Holding, number 28, offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. They call it on Tony Burst, and Tony is not too excited about the call. Well, I, I, I've never really seen that call before. Let's see it. There's, that's not holding. Well, maybe. Maybe but around the neck. Actually, it is. but. <laughs> You know, Malcolm Frank actually went underneath Burst. And I don't know what else Burst could really do here. You know, I, well, if anything, it could be, you know, a blow to the head or something. I don't know. At any rate, it negates a great-looking 12-yard run by Mike Pringle. And with 133 left. I'll tell you, I don't know if I'd want to be uh, Malcolm Frank, though, with Burst coming at me like that. He showed a lot of courage hanging in there. Second and 11. Pringle, head head-on. And got to the 20. That ball is loose but blown dead. And you see the clock. And it's definitely the ally of the Sacramento Surge. Dave Archer, after those years as an Atlanta Falcon, bounced around the NFL and last year was looking for work. And he says, you know, I'd go out and throw seven water-soaked footballs out at Atlanta Christian School every day all by myself. And I just had to pick out some ruts out there in the road and think that there were ghosts playing defense. Well, the ghosts are looking pretty good right now for Dave Archer. He's our KFC player of the game, and Kentucky Fried Chicken will make a donation of $1,000 in Dave Archer's name to Drug Abuse Resistance Education. Pringle. I'll tell you what, now there's going to be an interesting dilemma right here if you're Sacramento. You don't even, I don't even think you go for the field goal. Just let the clock, the game should be over. So that you don't have to, you don't have to run a play, the game should be over. 27, 26, and winding down. Game's over. Sacramento was 3-2 and two at midseason. Kay Stevenson said every week the pressure was on this group, and I'm so proud of them that they responded every week. Six straight, soon to become seven. And it is celebration time if they can catch him. They got him. <laughs> they got him. Fred Smurlis once said, this guy is so clean, he looks like he fell off a mannequin truck. Well, I'll tell you, he can celebrate tonight. Kay Stevenson, Sacramento Surge, rules the world with an unbelievable second half comeback. And Galen Hall's Orlando Thunder falls 21-17. What a game we had. What a second half we had. The game of mistakes. Sacramento made him in the beginning. Orlando made him at the end. Sacramento hang in there and they won the game. Let's see if Michael Barkin can get down with Coach Stevenson. Mark? Well, Brad, yesterday we talked to Kay Stevenson. I said, what's the emotion like for you? And you said, I really don't get involved in that kind of thing at this point. What's your emotion now? Well, uh, what do you say when you when you win a championship and you've had to come the hard way? I, uh, one, I couldn't be more proud of our football team. That's number one. I, uh, I'm just happy for the kids. They're, they're super kids. They've had to come seven weeks in a row. What a tough, tough road to hope. 
and they've done it. And so I, you know, I've got to be extremely proud of that. I'm happy for uh, Brett Anderson. I'm happy for our fans. You were down 17 points when David Archer brought you guys back. Talk to me about his leadership, even when you were down, and he was he didn't have the ball. Well, he's just done us an unbelievable job all year. You know, David is that type of quarterback. David Archer is one of the top quarterbacks. I don't want to go overboard, but I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in football, period. And uh, he's done a heck of a job for us all year. He's, that, he's a great competitor. That sets him apart from other people. All right, Coach. Congratulations on a nice win. Brad? Time to celebrate for the Sacramento Surge as they come from behind and their 1992 World Bowl champions and our congratulations to their entire organization. That's how it feels in the assistant coach's booth. You saw the celebration on the field, and that probably feels pretty good on the back of Kay Stevenson, too. 21-17, the surge wins it. We'll be back in one minute. You were here. She has a traveler's checks here. There's got to be a better way. Here's one now. New American Express Traveler's Checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without This year, the Lake Edna Players present the Wild West Review. Tonight, director Lauren Clark tried to motivate her cast of cowboys with new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. The chicken was unbelievable, as were a few of the performances. Try the two-piece Honey Barbecue Roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99, for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. What? You gotta be kidding me! Have you ever wanted to call the play? Well, now's your chance, because you're the coach. Play the game. Make the big call. Be the game-winning coach. Call now. You can show the coaches how to do it. Use your best strategy to win the big game. You call the play. Now that's how to call a play. If you know football, call 1-900-773-2255. 269 per minute, adults only. The World Bowl on USA is being brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Ed Shaving Gel. Less irritation, you've got the edge. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. The Sacramento Surge comes from behind and wins World Bowl II over the Orlando Thunder in a thrilling football game. 21 to 17 is the final, and the most valuable player is quarterback David Archer, who won the MVP for the regular season and showed why in the second half, especially tonight, as he led his team back 11 for 13, 138 yards, and two touchdowns in the second half. And two of those touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And he did it all with a sore ankle. He hurt himself in the third quarter on one of his runs. He really showed some guts today. He's got some family here. His dad, Don, is here from uh, Idaho. His mom, Nola, is watching in uh, Clearwater, Florida tonight. And his wife, Jill, who he said, if there's one person that believed in me through all the downtimes, it was my wife, Jill. And she is here to see the old man take the MVP home tonight. Where's Tony Burke? There it is, about 70 pounds of World League Globe Trophy. Sacramento fans were great all season long for their surge. One of the teams that attendance went up as the season and the second season went along. And there is Jill Archer. He finally found him for a hug. <laughs> and now the surge will come up in the stands to uh, <laughs> take in that World Bowl championship piece of crystal. It's something the London Monarchs started on their home turf at Wembley last year. And here in the second season, the Sacramento Surge will take the walk. I, I wasn't there to see that last year. This is, <laughs> this is quite some spectacle coming up. Uh, actually, it's more dangerous coming up into the stands than like it is a, on the game. It's like a full blitz all the way up the uh, aisle here. <laughs> Look at this. Great. And actually, look at the guy lead them, man. That's the guy you don't want to get messed with. They got Nate. There he is, right there. The pack. There he is, right there. <laughs> There's Nate, about 320, leading the quarterback, Dave Archer. Oh, 
this is great. And actually, they get a chance to parade it around like uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins would uh, be parading around the Stanley Cup trophy after they get it. Forty-three thousand seven hundred fifty-nine at Olympic Stadium in Montreal tonight. A great crowd, as a boisterous crowd. And finally, the surge has made its way in the vicinity of Joe Bailey and Jerry Benici and the World League folks for the presentation of the World Bowl II 1992 Championship. Michael Barkin sure. and Dave Archer. Let's go to Mike right now. With the surge and Chief Operating Officer Joe Bailey. Joe, do your stuff. Present that trophy to this team. All right, here we go. On behalf of the entire World League family, we pronounce you the champions of the world, the Sacramento Surge. Congratulations. Be careful, lift that up. That's 41 pounds worth of crystal. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. footballs we talked about that Dave Archer threw. <laughs> Nate's got an easier time than the quarterback. You don't see that security guard around anymore now that Nate's there. <laughs> David Archer, come on over here. This has been a dream year for you. Talk to me about what this means real quick before you go back out there. I what, you know what can I say, Mike? Uh, uh, it's been it's been unbelievable. We came we had lost two games early in the season, and we could not afford to lose another ball game. We won seven in a row, and that's the way you win it all, baby. And that's uh, you know uh, tremendous tremendous feeling. It was a team effort, though. That's the thing about it. They throw accolades on different guys. Myself, Eddie Brown, but our but our defense, man, they rose up and stopped them, and we had a chance to win. And now next year, the Philadelphia Eagles. What are you going to do there? Oh, I, Boy, that's a tough question. I'm just going to enjoy this tonight and uh, let them sort that one out in the morning. All right, congratulations. Kay, Kay Stevenson called you the, one of the best quarterbacks in pro football. Brad, back to you. All right, he showed it in the second half tonight, at least in this World Bowl championship game. Sacramento Surge wins it tonight over Orlando, 21-17. We'll have some final words in Montreal when we come back. The Brooker boys are here on tour. What's been the highlight of your lake in the stop, Matt? I'd say this new honey barbecue chicken rust. Fried chicken glazed in a special sauce with a touch of honey. Get two pieces with baked beans, coleslaw, and a biscuit in a roundup meal for just $2.99. That was completely unsolicited. The two-piece honey barbecue roundup meal, just $2.99, or the eight-piece meal, just $9.99 for a limited time in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. You've dreamed about it for years. You've planned every detail. At last, you've made the dream come to life. You've put so much into it. Put Olympic stain on it. It's the protection that keeps your home as beautiful as your dream. Olympic from PPG protects more home than any other stain. PPG salutes the American spirit. It's beautiful. 900 carats just begging to be taken. Luck and fire. Brilliance. He planned on the alarms, the surveillance, even the cop. If Dunn steals your rock, I'll quit the force. But he hadn't planned on her. It's the steal of a lifetime. You're gonna love it. Ben Cross, Kate Nelligan, and Brian Dennehy. Diamond Fleece. A USA world premiere movie. June 17th. The Sacramento Surge takes World Bowl 92 here at Olympic Stadium in Montreal tonight. 21 to 17 is the final score. Coming up next on the East Coast, it's up all night. Tonight's first movie feature is Class of Newcomb High. And on the West Coast, the USA movie Fear City. That's going to do it from Olympic Stadium. Boomer, it was a blast again. Good luck with the Bengals this year.
For Boomer Esiason and Michael Barkan, I'm Brad Nestler. Thanks for being with us on USA as we crown a world champion. It's the Sacramento Surge, and here's the rest of a great, great crew that helped bring you World League football all year on USA Network. Good night, everybody. <laughs>